Chicago's bitches, it's time for some pop goulash. I am Ruben, and today I have friends from the internet in my house. Yeah. Um, sitting across the table from me is uh, Dan Summers, who is from the Quad Cities area, and he's a drug dealer. I am a professional drug dealer, yes. Talk closer to the microphone, son. All right. Get up I, in it like I you're... I uh... am a professional drug dealer. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a pharmacist in Moline, Illinois. My real name is not Dan Summers, but <laughs> you don't need to know what it really is. Right. And then to my right, I've got Bob Taylor. Hello. And he's from Chicago. Yep. Actually made a trip out to the suburbs, which is pretty intense for anybody that lives in the city i'm from the suburbs so not really yeah i have friends that were from the suburbs and moved to the city and never look back well i'm i'm not the type to like deny my heritage so right yeah right. i'm not ashamed of being a suburbanite nice so and bob what do you do uh, a couple of things i so i work for it's a like i do stuff <laughs> that's kind of it's kind of my situation um I work doing some sort of light IT social media management for uh, my wife. She's a therapist, a private practice up in up in Gurney, oh, right okay. on the state line of Illinois and Wisconsin. Right on. And then uh, when the work kind of falls into my lap, uh, I I do sort of maintenance on fixing up people's guitars and stuff like oh, that. Oh, nice. Yeah, I went to school for that a few years Bit ago. Bit of a luthier. Uh, I wouldn't use that term. Okay. I don't do any building. Okay. At least yet, but I did go to school for that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Well, we all met on a uh, through uh, a podcast called The Inglorious Pastors. You guys know out there know I talk about it quite a bit. Uh, we had Michael and uh, Matt both on the show, um, but they have a Patreon group that uh, it's an exclusive uh, Patreon uh, fan group, I guess, on Facebook. And we all kind of met through there, mm -hmm. just out of the blue, and. Um, Dan happened to be in town, and uh, Bob was in town, and I'm like, hey, come on over. Let's podcast. And let's they're like, oh, this. we thought we were just going to come by and drink beer. I'm like, fuck no. We don't do. We don't just sit around and hang out at my house. We have to podcast. You got to exploit us. I'll give you beer if you record crap. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So here we are. But yeah, so what are, you guys, uh, what are you guys into as far as music, movies, TV shows, books, comics? I listen to pretty much as much music as I can and watch as Dude. many movies as I can. Right on. Uh, I grew up reading comic books, but it's something that uh, I kind of just stopped paying attention to for the most part. But, like, I know what shirt you're wearing right now. It's a Nightwing shirt. Yes. Yeah. But I don't follow, like, comic books. It feels daunting to, to get back into yeah. it as, as an adult just because there's so much there. Yeah. I jumped back in about six years ago, seven yeah. years ago, when DC launched the new 52. I'm like, hey, they're all starting on number one, so it's what a good point to jump back in. Yeah. So that's when I really got back into it. Yeah, I, I, I'm a DC guy over Marvel, but I never uh, <clears throat> read the comics. My brother had comic books, but sure. he wouldn't let me touch them. He said, <laughs> if you, yeah, he's a dick. If you want to read them, you could only hold them like this. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm not right. listening. I'm not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not reading any of this. You have to get the white gloves out. Yeah. So I'm like, well, if I can't jerk off on it, then forget it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so more recently, so our uh, mutual friends, my, uh, Michael and Billy, uh, have been getting me into. Uh, yeah, fuck Billy. Not fuck Steve Austin. But yeah. um, <laughs> it's a joke, which is not good for this. But I don't um, care. yeah, no, it's my podcast. Who cares? You know, that's what everybody says. But uh, they've been getting me into Star Wars, so I've been watching Dude, through that, the Clone Wars. Yeah, I got to do wait, that. Wait, wait, so that's, that's, this is your introduction to Star Wars, period? Okay, so I've never been into Star Wars, and I try to explain to Michael. What? And Billy, that I um, never really got into it, and being a foreigner, so for those who don't know me, I was born in Romania, came here, came to Whoa. Chicago in 1988, <clears throat> but being a foreigner, like, my parents were not about American culture, they never encouraged me to learn about, you know, Zeppelin and right. Star Wars and all that shit. Well, Zeppelin was British, yo. But regardless, it's a big part of like I feel like a lot of my American Americana. friends, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, you know, even Springsteen, any of these guys, like my parents didn't want me listening to that. They had me listen to Romanian church music. So uh, yeah, so I watched yeah, the but movies. How, how badass and goth were you in high school though? Oh yeah, with my mandolin playing classical music. Yeah, no, but uh, but you were dressed as a vampire. Right, that's true. That's true. Because <laughs> not a lot of people know that, you know, that uh, I can't be in the daylight. But uh, it is it is past. Uh, 
It, it is past dusk. Here. That's why I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> Fair Otherwise, enough. I'd be sleeping right now. But, uh, and I do work overnights. So. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, this, so this, so I watch the movies like every normal whatever American. But uh, I uh, can't say I've ever gotten into it. I didn't really understand the obsession over it. And then, sure. I, honestly, I told Michael this recently, but he's the one who got me into it. Mm-hmm. I before. Couldn't give two shits about it. I thought it was a cool story, but right. now I've been listening to audiobooks, and the Phasma audiobook is kick ass. Is it? Have you seen? So you've seen all the movies? I've seen all the movies, but not the animated movie. So not okay. Clone Wars. Sure. I mean, the Clone Wars movie was shit. That's what I hear. It's a lot of people good. will tell you that, but apparently, if you watch it in the chronological order of the Clone Wars TV show, it nestles in nicely in the middle. That and makes it makes sense. a lot more sense than uh, it did if they just to watch it dry. Right. And spoiler alert, I guess. So I'm in the middle of Clone Wars and I'm on season two, I believe. And I guess they're going to do another season. Yeah, they just did announced it at Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah they're going to do. Uh, Michael posted it on the uh, uh, Star Wars group and he's like, oh, shit. And I'm he like, was so excited. Yeah. I know, like, I'm like, dude, it's back away from the computer. I don't yeah. think the computer can handle that much jizz. No. His, his keyboard's fucked. But uh, <laughs> I guess, yeah, he's, you know, and I think a lot of people are hoping that, you know, it'll uh, live up. I guess. I, did you finish it? Did you watch I, it? I've, I think I've probably watched a total of 10 episodes. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm in the yeah. same boat. It's just, and it's not for lack of wanting to. It's just lack of time. Right, right. You know, like it wasn't up on Netflix forever and then they pulled it down and now it's back up temporarily until Disney puts their thing up. But now... My kids don't want to have anything to do with it, man. It's all like Paw Patrol and weird Korean animation children's programming. So Voltron, which is awesome. Oh. But I don't know if that's Korean, but Voltron no. is kick-ass. No, Voltron is pretty kick-ass. No, they're watching uh, Robocar Poli, which is a really bad Transformers-esque oh, type nice. thing. And uh, So Voltron. S- yeah, but not good. <laughs> And uh, Super Wings. Oh, my God. If I have to watch Super Wings, I swear to God, I'm going to break this bottle and shank myself with it. It's fucking horrible. Luckily, my kids like Clone Wars. So, like, my youngest would be like, Dad, let's watch Clone Wars. And I'm like, yeah, but you've been a bunch of assholes, so we're not watching right. any cartoons right now. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we've had that evening tonight, too. So. <laughs> so you haven't touched, like, wasn't there another animated series from Star Wars, but like Rebels? See, Rebels I didn't watch. Okay. And I was always told Rebels is not that good. Okay. So oh, dude, for I a person en- who's not that interested in Star Wars. Yeah. Actually, I enjoyed, I've seen the first two seasons, I think, of Rebels, and I really enjoyed Rebels. Really? Yeah, I really liked it, but we don't have Disney XD, and I'm not paying to buy the DVD sets, but I enjoy it. Like, that's, I think that's a similar animation, just different p- point yeah, in the timeline, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, well, I mean, it's computer animated, but yeah. it's not the very sharp lines and stuff, that, okay. not that very like Dude, stylized animation. Did you watch Clone Wars Season 1, though? Yeah. I mean, that animation was not good. No. So, no, I, mean, I mean... If it's as bad as that, then maybe I won't watch it. No, 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 because, no. I mean, this is, this, I mean, they've started like four years ago five years ago or something so i mean the animation style is definitely a lot more Mm pixar-ish as opposed to very like clunky and and crappy cgi or whatever yeah yeah but you got to figure like clone wars started like 10 years almost 18 years ago or something i mean it was in the early aughts i think yeah finally when it first started because that's where you got all the background from like the what was it general grievous yes yeah 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 and explain uh, why he has a cough and shit like that right yeah yeah you know it's the stuff they probably should have really given you before that movie came out right but didn't because george lucas hates us yeah so have you I, yeah yeah did you see solo yet I have not seen Solo. Okay, so Solo no, I haven't seen all the movies I did. yet. Solo was fantastic. I, I, I meant like like the mainline movies. The good yeah. ones. Like the tri- the original trilogy specifically. Sure. Did yeah. you guys like Rogue One and Solo? I've liked everything that's been put out. Including the, 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 prequels? the prequels? They have their own special place in my heart. Sure. Which is like saying they have their own special place mm-hmm. in hell. Yeah. But they for what they are, they're not bad. I will tell you, the and I've told other people this too, the one thing that I hate is when people comment about uh, Anakin's hating sand. People yeah. are always like, he's bitching about sand. It's he's sand, such a little it's bitch. It's coarse. It gets in everywhere. Dude, it is a common theme. I was listening to Aftermath. People bitch about sand. I was listening to some book about uh, Luke Skywalker. He complained about sand. Uh-huh. So it's it's a common theme that sand really sucks. Yeah. Which is weird. But Well, yeah. I mean, but and it's funny because like if you even think about it, you know, both uh, Luke and Anakin grew up on Tatooine, which was a desert planet. Right. And Ray grew up on Jakku, which was a desert planet. 
And uh, what was the planet that they went to in um, in Rogue One? Because that was a fucking desert planet too. I don't know. I'm not so, that big of a nerd. Jeddah. Jeddah. Okay. Yeah. The, the where they blew up the temple to test the Death Star to first start okay. out. Yep. That was a desert planet too. So yeah, it was. They, they love that theme. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's really bizarre, but yeah, I see. I, I'm I consider myself a Padawan of uh, Michael Basinger, so he's my master. And I'm like, dude, so should I finish Clone Wars first before watching Rebels? What should I do? Because I don't know, you know. Right. It is daunting. It's kind of like starting DC or oh, yeah. starting Marvel. Like, where the hell do you start? Who For do sure. you start with? Yeah. Yeah. So I, how long ago did you see like uh, like the original trilogy? So. This is around the time Michael and I became friends, and I feel bad always so not referencing that, So him. not that long ago? So I watched them again recently. Actually, no. I'm sorry. The prequels I watched recently before The Last Jedi, and then I actually listened to the audiobooks of the original three. Sure. So the original three were made into audiobooks, and they mm-hmm. had uh, different spins to it. Sure. So the episode four was uh, a farmer, a princess, and a... Uh, something else, a rebel or whatever it was. And then the third, the f- episode five was, so you want to be a Jedi. And then episode six was something else. Really? But yeah, it was a cool little spin that the, that they did. Disney mm-hmm. did on them. Interesting. I, like I guess what I'm, what I'm wondering is how seeing them as an adult, how do you feel about the prequels and the original trilogy? Cause I, I can't get into that. I can't get into that headspace cause I saw the original trilogy when I was three years old. And yeah. I've been in love with it ever since. And I recognize fully that I watch those movies with the thickest of nostalgia goggles. Yeah, and that's that's how I've always looked at it, too, is like, you know, with that, anytime they bring something back after decades, like Indiana Jones, like people shit all over the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I enjoyed the Kingdom of the it Crystal was, Skull. It was rough. It was Indiana Jones doing Indiana Jones shit. But that and ending, I will... spoil alert, come on, a, dude. I don't the fucking care. aliens? No, honestly, dude. I, don't, I don't mind the aliens. That's not something I criticize. No, I mean, look at it. Like, they they chased around, like, like in the previous three movies. Well, no, not even uh, the first and the second movies. They were, they were chasing down, like, religious relics. Uh, it's, yeah. been I mean, a, it's been a while. It's yeah, well, even in, even in Temple of Doom, they were chasing down religious relics. Yeah. I mean, really, you could... Might as well just say they're chasing down alien shit at that point. Too. Sure, sure, sure. You know, but like, I I go into these movies fully well aware that I'm a 40 year old man, and I am not going to feel the same way about it as I did when I was three or ten or however old I was when I was watching these movies that, for the first. That's time. healthy. It is. I think it's normal. You know, and like even with the the new Ghostbusters that came out with the female cast, people are like, "Oh, fucking sucks." I'm like, it was funny. Like, I look. I don't hold that too tightly to the shit that I watched as a kid. Like, sure. oh, it has to be exactly the same way, because if it's not exactly the same way, then it's fucking bullshit. Why should we even bother with it? Doesn't I, it sound like the Star Wars fans that are bitching oh, about man, the worst. Uh, uh, what's his face, Finn and uh, Rose? Yeah. It sounds. It reminds me so much of that. But when you were asking about how, to, how Rose, is it a... watching it all over again um, as an adult, I think it's helped being able to talk about it with other people. Otherwise, sure. I, I I don't have that eye for movies where it's like, oh, this is what they're trying to do with this right. scheme or whatever. But talking about it with Michael and Billy, it's really helped. Uh, it's really helped me just kind of like, oh, this is what they're trying to do. Oh, they're alluding to this. So what were your first impressions? Obviously, you liked it enough to continue, continue. paying attention to Star Wars. So I'm a relational person. So just being able to talk about it. Honestly, that's really about it. About it. So, um, for a point of conversation. So let me. Think. Did you enjoy? Let's say you watched you watched the original trilogy. Did you watch them first, or did you watch the prequels first? I don't even remember because I watched them as a kid. So, but when oh, you we, did watch them as a kid. Okay, I, I, as a kid, yeah. But more recently, getting ready for Last Jedi, I think I did watch it in order, where I watched one, two, and three, listened to the audiobooks of four, five, and six, yeah, and then watched uh, Force Awakens, but. Um. Yeah, I love the story. I love where it's going. I love the deeper stuff behind the religion of Je- the Jedi's and that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. I'll never be able to be as smart as some of these other Star Wars nerds. But <laughs> well, yeah. But then again, like I can't I, see, and I also that's another thing that I for about me, like I can't compare myself to somebody who's been entrenched in all of the books and all of right. the lore that goes along with it. I just I don't have that kind of time. Right. You know, I wasn't into it then. Like, I love me some Star Wars, but I didn't have, you know, enough time in my life to read 75 books based on shit that didn't even happen in the movies. You spared yourself, apparently, a lot of pain once Disney took you know over. What, though? But at the same time, it's not like those stories don't matter. 
Oh, I agree, but people took oh, a, took offense to them being made non-canon, like oh, yeah. at the snap I mean, of somebody's fingers. Dude, trust me, I, uh, Thanos. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. But like, I I got a buddy of mine that we lives can up. Talk in, about that too. Right. I got a buddy of mine that lives up in Michigan. That's like, no, I refuse to see any of the new Star Wars movies because it's that's not canon to me. I'm like, then you're missing out on some good storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, it's like, look, you can still have that. It's not like they that Disney rounded up all the books and torched them in a like fire ceremony. You know, it's like, look, just enjoy the fact that those are those and this is what's happening now. They do probably have the like infrastructure and capacity to do to that. To be able though. to do that, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny because like even if you, you take all of those stories that happened, did those fanboys get all pissed off when George Lucas was like, I'm going to write the first three movies in the trilogy? You know, like how right? Well, but then it was it was focused on a guy who was the hero, you know. And now that it's a girl, and then you have Finn, who's kind of like an, also an, an interesting take on it, right? You know. So that, I mean, back then it was exactly what was expected. In yeah, it's a heroes. guy. I can relate to a guy. Oh my god! Why is it got to be a girl now? Yeah, girls can't have the force, really, really. That's yeah. That's and that's a totally different uh, conversation about where the force is going and who has it. And does it have to be familial and right. all that stuff? I I have I take no issue with like particularly in Last Jedi with them sort of changing the rules a little bit. If, yeah, if you even think that that's what they did, well, I, I have no problem but with Clone that. Clone Wars did that. Where yeah. like I just watched the recent episode in season two, or I think season two, where Bane was going after kids who had the Force, and mm-hmm. there was no backstory to those kids. Right. So where the hell did they get it from? It's about well, as random as that kid with the broomstick. Yeah, the midi- or the midi chlorians. Yeah, yeah, midi chlorians. <laughs> that's that. That's one of the one unforgivable things about the the prequels that I just. I'm glad they dropped it after that little conversation. I don't remember it though. Though, well, yeah. What was the conversation? It was uh, Qui Gon, wasn't Qui-Gon, it? Qui Gon like zapped, like took a diabetes test trick to him. <laughs> it was like, oh, his midi chlorian count is off the road. Oh, what's a midi chlorian? Oh, that's what it, it controls. It, like controls the force. It became was... Dragon Ball Z, where their power level went. This is the other t- dorky side of me, where it, you know became power levels. Right. But I don't know if you guys ever watched that. I, I did. I did. I've, I've seen all of that show. Yeah. Um, but no, there was a show on Adult Swim a long time ago. It was like a, a an adult English redub of an, an 80s Japanese cartoon called Shin-chan. Okay. Um, the original in Japanese was a children's cartoon, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was and it was innocent and and as children's programming ten, tends to be. But the the adult redub, uh, they did an excellent Star Wars parody episode. Really? Yeah, and they refer to them as shitty chlorians. It makes hilarious. me laugh every oh time. God. Nice characters like uh, uh, instead of Obi Wan Kenobi, it's anyone can blow me. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's worth looking up. Was that was Shin that Chan. like was that a uh, like an Adult Swim thing? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, so it's like I just, I just, I love Star Wars stuff. I really do, and I love the comics that Marvel's been putting out. Like I've See, been I reading. Gotten into that yet? I've read. I'm reading all of them. Let like, me tell you, yesterday, sorry to cut you off. No. So yesterday I was uh, talking to Michael about, again, going through the timeline and whatever. And um, I saw the Darth Maul comic was yeah. one of the first in the timeline. And like I'm like looking at my library. I'm like, who the hell has this? I want to start you know, sure. reading the comics because I don't know. The Darth Maul cool. book was actually pretty damn badass. Yeah. Yeah. Like, And f- as far as Marvel goes, the only other Marvel title I really read is Thor. Oh, nice. Because I like Jason Aaron's writing because he's the guy that writes for Thor right now. And those are the only Marvel titles I read. Like, I was reading Ms. Marvel for a while because um, G. Willow Wilson is writing it, and she's a Muslim-American. Hmm. Okay. And so um, Ms. Marvel's a Muslim. Oh, wow. And she's a teenager, and she's experiencing life through high school, trying to be a superhero, but also trying to be a teenager. You know, And I ought to pick it up again, because I'm sure that she's got some awesome social commentary going on throughout it, but... I kind of dropped off after a while because I I just re- I have too many books and I'm backlogged. Like you know, Michael put that big stack of his books on on in the picture. That's what's picture. daunting to me, getting back into comic books as an adult. You know what though? Just pick up a trade paperback every now and again. You know, like the good thing now is they're numbering the trade paperbacks, so you can start off with a one, and right. it'll start off with you know issue one and give you five issues for fifteen bucks or yeah. twenty bucks. That's what I was telling you when we first got in here. Was there was a Comic Con in, in Moline? Yeah, uh, it's like a smaller one. They actually had the voice from One Punch Man. If you ever watched that show, but I've uh, heard of it. They had the guy who created Rampage. 
he was there, so that the, was pretty cool. The video cool. game? The video game, nice. yeah. And he was saying, oh, he met The Rock and all this stuff. And he's like, I'm rich, bitch. Yeah, well, it was. I mean, he was a super nice guy, too. Sure. You know, gave my kids coins to play his video game or nice. whatever. But uh, I wonder, is he from around here, do you know? Because I think that was a Midway game. Midway, it? yeah. Midway was right off of, uh, it was off of California, wasn't it? Or I don't, I don't know where it was. It was off of Central Park. But I, know, I only know that because... There's, there's an arcade in Brookfield where they have all the Mortal Kombat games. Well, and Midway, they, do a, they do events with all of those actors. Yeah, Midway Games was used to be across the street from uh, um, Hot Dugs. Oh my gosh, I used oh, to go to I, Hot Dugs. I used to live right around the corner from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. so Lane Midway Tuck. Games was right across the street. Yeah, I lived... Uh, oh, that makes sense, because they're a company that makes slot machines now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. my uh, my apartment, I used to live in... Um, oh, uh, uh, where was it? There's a oh shit I've I've I'm so tired right now because stupid <laughs> kids I love my kids but god damn it um, I love those little assholes yeah seriously Lincoln no not Lincoln I lived on Tallman I was like twenty four hundred North Tallman but it was right around the corner from there yeah and uh, um, Logan Square I lived in Logan, Logan Square for okay, a, okay. for a hot minute so a little, little south of it of yeah but it like been, we yeah. yeah we would head up there and every now and again when we had an afternoon because, like, dude, I miss hot dogs. Oh, oh yeah. see, I didn't get into it because I got mad. What happened was that before it was hot dogs, it was just like this, like, a restaurant where they sold burritos and all this stuff, and I loved their burritos. Uh-huh. Yeah, because Doug was at a different spot at that point. I believe oh, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So what happened was this guy's like, yeah, I'm going on a vacation to Hawaii, and he never came back, and I was really? like, oh, he was fucking with us, and he's just closing down the place. That's and then funny. hot dogs came in, and I just couldn't get into hot dude, dogs. Dude, Doug's had the best hot dogs, They man. were good. The, that duck sausage with the foie gras on top. Oh. oh, their wild game sausage of the week. Yeah. Oh, and the duck fat fries on Friday. Dude, I used to get my hot dogs. I used to get them grilled and deep fried. Oh. Yeah. Even before awesome. I moved to the city, which was five years ago, mm-hmm. uh, I would make somewhat regular pilgrimages just to go out to go to hot dogs. Yeah. I I I knew nothing about it until it was on uh, Anthony Bourdain. Really? No. Crazy. No. And then. They closed we, down like a year later. Or well, something. we signed. Well, my wife and I. Sad. We signed our our first lease to move to the city, and literally five days after we signed that lease, we were on our honeymoon, mm-hmm. and he announced that he was closing. Yeah, I and we a, went and saw him, and we were we were like so pissed. He's like, "Fine, I could just kick you out." He was joking, but yeah, I have a buddy of mine who got a hot dog tattoo. Yeah, to get him you, for free. You'd get a hot you get a hot dog free every day for life if you had that, and then <laughs> that's worth it. How many? Yeah, how many people got are like stuck with hot dog yeah. tattoos? So. It's not the same thing, but some of the guys that worked for him, when they opened up a shop, they do kind of the same thing with right. it, with his blessing. It's pretty good. I've been there. Yeah, Hot G Dog, it's called. Yeah, he's he's in got a thing open in Wrigley. In yeah, Wrigley only Stadium. in the bleachers. Really? Yeah, wow. you have to get a bleacher seat to eat them. Oh, that sucks. It's kind of cool. It's kind of exclusive and cool, but like, how hard is it to get bleacher seats? They're just kind of expensive most of the time. Now yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah, I remember when you used to like be able to pay a hobo and he'd. You can be able to get in for free. <laughs> you find you, you're talking Wu. to an old, old Cubbies fan. They're just like, I remember when it was only a nickel. Yeah, I right. will tell you guys. Just, I mean, this is totally a tangent, but when, uh, so I'm a hospice volunteer, okay. and I actually had a patient who was a diehard Cubs fan. They won the World Series, and he died three months later. That's I'm awesome. not shitting you. That's I was pretty, like, this is so that's cool. That's pretty awesome. Very right. cool. Nice. So, yeah, we watched a game, and I was just like, you know, he doesn't know the players like maybe, you know, some of the people do now. but Yeah, but still, like, he got to see, he got to see his Cubbies win before he passed. Which is fantastic. The... Nice. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll see my Bears win before I die. <laughs> I saw it in '85, so uh, we're see, still I holding. I was two on years old in Romania, so. Oh yeah, I was. That that team has to change ownership before that'll ever happen. No, yeah. no. Seriously, the best thing about the Bears right now is that if you run the Soldier Field ten miler in over late Memorial Day weekend, you get to cross the finish line at the fifty yard line inside the stadium. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've done it. Th- Three times. Nice. Yeah, and then I blew my knee out. And now I'm trying to get back into running again because I'm maybe one day to I'll get back on that you. 50 yard line. Yeah, I love running, so maybe one day I'll do it with you, dude. You, it's we a get fun to be, race. We get to be on the spot where Jay Cutler didn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously, how, how cool is that? Where he got to push his own teammate that, out of the way. That's yeah. your go to. Not go-to. not like where Walter Payton. Nope, Jay Cutler played. not giving a shit because you know who fucking right. cares. But it's cool. It's a cool Smoky race Jay. because you actually. Smoky Jay. Run five miles down the lake, and then you turn around, and then you ride five miles back, 
and you finish on the 50 yard line. They put you on the big jumbotron and stuff. Wow. That's yeah. cool. Nice. I used to, when I was at high school at Lane, uh, my buddy and I would go down to Lakeshore Drive and run from North. Uh, what is it called? North, North Avenue, Avenue Beach. Beach. We would run to uh, Navy Pier and back, and oh that God. is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, gorgeous. I that's one part of uh, not living here that I miss is that was just fantastic. Well, you can run down the Rock River, right? I run. I run down the Mississippi River. The Mississippi. And I'll yeah. tell you, the first that's time cool. I actually, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like it. The first time I did run further down the Mississippi River when I was actually passing my like five mile run, I saw an eagle going parallel <laughs> with the river. Because there are eagles like, oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. there. It's, they're fucking beautiful. But uh, it was just like, I was like running and I was looking at the eagle like, oh my God, that is so cool. So of course I stopped. And See, I would be running like, I wonder what that tastes like. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful you see a bald eagle and that's your first thought <laughs> right well d- dude look at me you don't get this body by not eating everything you see america fuck, fuck yeah. yeah dude every time they play that i just want him to play that one ending part of the song where he just goes america fuck, fuck yeah but he just ends it's like the sad part and he just he ends it just america Fuck! It's just <laughs> I've never seen that movie, but oh my god, you! I have remember to. when it came out of that. I guess there was like a sex scene that's supposed oh. to be hilarious. You oh, got yeah. you got to get the unrated sex scene because there's a Shiza scene in it. Oh, I, I hope it comes out when my kids come down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what do I do? That's funny, but yeah, I'll be at Wrigley actually on Sunday. I'm going to see the Foo Fighters. Nice. Yeah. Uh, just to piss you guys off, my Cardinals won today, eighteen to five. Your I believe. Your Cardinals, gross. Mm, yeah, but they lost last night. Yeah, I'm they sorry. did because they just fired their manager too, so they're not yeah. in good place. I just did really you... wanted to piss off Bob. Yeah, but didn't didn't we get the Cardinals manager and like half their team, and then a couple years later won the World Series? Yeah, yeah. So hey, there you listen, go. Listen, Epstein is just a great president. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we should have him run next year or in twenty eighteen. You know, that dude can do anything. If he could get the Boston Red Sox to a championship and the Cubs, he could fucking bring this country around. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's funny. (laughs) Oh, So you just saw Radiohead, yeah? Yeah, and I'm going to go see him again next week. Really? Where are they playing next week? Cincinnati. I'm driving to Cincinnati. Wow. Yeah. I I went to school there, so I've got some connection there. Right on. Where are they playing? I'll go see some friends. Uh, U.S. Bank Arena. It's an arena that no team plays in. Okay. Uh, I think like a minor league hockey team plays there. It's... The way uh, it's set up, I don't know if you've ever been to Cincinnati. I have been to Riverbend Amphitheater once. Okay, and that's, that's kind of that's outside the city. I think it's sure. technically in Kentucky. No, it's technically it's actually in okay. Ohio. Yeah, then you so. have to go through Kentucky to get there. I don't remember. Yeah, I was you, on you some drive drugs, through you, so. <laughs> you drive through like Covington or Florence or something okay. like that. That's a cool venue though. It's a beautiful venue. Yeah, I saw especially f- for an outdoor spot. Yeah, I saw Fish play there. Yeah, they used to play there a bunch, oh, or maybe they still do. I have no idea. Um, what the fuck is Fish? Fish their jam band. Okay. You don't know fish? Dude, I'm I'm foreign. So that's always going to no, be no, my no, that's no, always no. going to be my right that's Wait, not a shaming statement. No, 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 I'm just no, surprised. Absolutely. No, I don't when, I don't know a lot of When did you come to live in the states? In 88. 88? So, I was, yeah, so I was five. But my, you know, like there's people whose parents taught them what music to listen yeah, to. That's true. I don't know if your parents introduced you to Fish or whatever, but... Oh, yeah, I, I found I, them in college. I probably feel the polar opposite about Fish than, than Ruben does. You hate them? I lived with the, the hardest core fish fan for for three years and that was all i needed really did you ever get a chance to see him live no i might be going when i when they come around in october because he went I, that guy went with me to see radiohead okay. they played twice in chicago two yeah, weeks yeah. ago and so i feel like i owe him now yeah dude fish is amazing live they're so f- i'd rather prefer to see them live than to listen to the records that's usually what fish fans yeah. say yeah and, and like the records are good but man live it's just it's a totally different experience absolutely different experience and i saw their uh because i'm on their mailing list yeah i haven't seen them in probably four or five years my wife was it was probably four years my wife was still pregnant with grayson the last time i saw him so you had a good break what's that so, so you had a good break yeah yeah it's you're now not it's, touring with them no not anymore <laughs> their uh their fan base is what turns me off to them now that's also what i hear that's yeah. kind of how uh, Maynard is with Tool fans. He, yeah. yeah, he also hates his well his fans unless he's raping them. So. Well, you know, you mm, gotta get yeah. them too. Yeah, I, I don't know how to feel about that. So I think you should. I think you you do know how you feel. Yeah, about this. It's, it's disappointing. <laughs> I just want it to be either confirmed or denied. Oh, sure, sure. You know, that's that's my thing. Like he is, you what, know. Yeah, I've I've seen the headlines, but I haven't read into it. Apparently, yet. Apparently, like back in the ninety or late nineties, early two thousands, when uh, Perfect Circle was touring. Um, he picked a girl out of the crowd, came back, brought her back to the bus, and apparently raped her in the bus. Fuck. Convinced her to leave her boyfriend behind. Yeah. Yeah. 
And like she said in this statement, oh, well, he does this in every city to all these girls. And he always likes younger, younger, underage girls. And I'm like, that's fucked up. Well, if he does, if he's a serial rapist like that, shouldn't there, wouldn't there be other people coming forward? Yeah. Not necessarily, I but mm, I don't know. When Cosby came out, man, people were just like raising their hand like left and right. It's you one know? of those things where, as bad as it sounds, I'm very cynical. Like I don't, I'm not surprised that shit happened. True. Like, I hear about rock stars doing this bullshit yeah. all the time. It doesn't make it right by any means. No, sense, not but, at all. And um, if he's a fucking serial rapist, I hope you know he he is gets his due. Out. Yeah, fuck that. But guy. like just in reading stuff and and knowing things about him, it just it seems very out of character, you know. But then again, Bill pe- Cosby, Bill, out of very character. True. But you know what though. Like he you want some quaaludes, uh, Ruben, after the show? You know what, though? His proclivities really were known within the comedy world. Was it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pe- oh, I mean, I don't. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and that's just from me listening to podcasts and people that have known about the same thing with Louis C.K. Like, people knew that he was jerking off in front of women for really? years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, people talk. So he wasn't <clears throat> Dr. Huxtable in real life? Oh, God, no. No, no, no. I mean, hell, even as Dr. Huxtable in one of the episodes, he was talking about this special barbecue sauce that he makes that make women go crazy oh my god yeah it's it's creepy was he a writer for the cosby show ah uh, well i think a lot of it was based off of his comedy oh, and there's that stuff makes sense. there's stuff of him like on carson talking about spanish fly what which is, is like that's that, it's like a date rape drug yeah oh, yeah mm-hmm. so but like it's yeah it's, it's just fucked up man yeah like, it's really fucked up but I dig their music so much, dude. Like, I saw Tool last year when they toured. It was, they were so fucking good. That, dude. So I worked at a, uh, at a, what is it? What's the Wisconsin Fest? Um, Summer Summer Fest. Fest. Yeah, so I worked at Summer Fest back in 2006 when they released um, uh, 10,000 10, Days. Days on, you know, whatever, 666 six, yeah. six, or whatever, you know, the stupid <laughs> cliche day. Right. But they played Summer Fest, and I really wanted to leave where I was working to go to the concert because I've always wanted to see them in yeah. concert. So that's on my bucket list is seeing them. But now that he's possibly a serial rapist, it's like, I, don't, I mean, I still listen to their shit, though, you know? Yeah, but there's also three other guys in the band. You right. Know? And then, did you hear about their clinic, the Tool Clinic? I, yeah, but I wasn't about to pay $500 no. to I mean, it's it. for, I think it's for musicians. I didn't read too much into it, but it sounds like it's for more for right. musicians. And they're brilliant, man. They're oh, poly God, they're rhythms incredible. and all that. Incredible. Fucking awesome. The yeah. bassist and drummer, Danny uh, Carey and uh, Justin, Justin Chancellor. Chancellor. Fucking amazing. Yeah, Justin Chancellor actually, like, the last time we saw we saw Tool, like, Justin ran the show. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, he was the one that was counting it off. He was the one that was, like, kind of like, you could see him orchestrating things from his position on stage. And Maynard stayed in the back and sang in the shadows. Which I kind of <laughs> like that, because honestly, he okay, he's talented, but out of all those guys, I think Carrie, Chancellor are probably equally super talented, Adam oh, yeah. Jones, and then... And then Maynard might be around the same. Yeah. I mean, I'm no talent, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, talent scout. Talent, talent scout. But, I mean, it's it's obvious by listening yeah. to the music who the talent is. Yeah. Because when Maynard came out with his own shit with Pussifer and with the Perfect Circle. Well, Perfect Circle really wasn't his either. That's true. It's Billy Howard. Yeah. But, like, yeah. that last album, like, the Elephant Tusk or whatever. Eat, eat an Elephant or Eat the Elephant. The Elephant Eats You or something. I don't know. Eat like, I haven't listened to I I kind of got it halfway through, like, one of the first songs. And I'm like. The fuck is this? It is badass, and I, I think it's I badass in a you, good way. I love it. Yeah, because okay. I mean, I do think it's a band that actually evolved in in a good way, in a sense. So when you listen to Emotive and Emotive, um, I hated that one too. See, but yeah, Emotive wasn't that good, or Emotive. You're, I agree. So I felt like they they went back away from that, and I guess Billy had a lot of music he was doing on uh, the piano, yeah, and that's why it was a lot quieter. So Doom. Or whatever it's the called. The Doomed, yeah, that one that's was awesome. That's the heaviest one, but Feathers is fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk Talk is brilliant, and that's okay. the, that's my lyrics for the the Inglorious Pastors sure. review, so Michael got pissed. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, he's like, oh my God, more musical lyrics, fuck that guy. That's but, funny. Uh, no, th- I, I think that album's brilliant, man. Really? I'll have to check it out again. It's it's on my it's on my phone. It's on my Apple Music. I just haven't like really given it its damn. You guys are talking Perfect Circle now? A perfect yes. Circle. Yeah. Contrarian is my favorite on that, okay. because I'm a contrarian. That's my favorite one. Sure, they they could use a different drummer touring versus studios. Is it Josh Freese. Josh in the Freese studio? in the yeah, studio. I'll listen to anything with him on it. Yeah, he he toured with them. I think for the first because I met him on the first tour. You met Josh Freese. Yes, awesome. I yeah. thought he wasn't doing it anymore. He might not be. I thought they, it was, I remember reading it was a new person, but I don't know. His it's name. very possible because they they've got uh, um, 
Uh, James Eha played guitar for him because he yeah. took over for Troy Van Leeuwen, which was kind of sad because Troy's amazing. Who did Troy play for? He's in Queens of the Stone Age. He now, was in Queen, he? yeah, he's in Queens of the Stone oh, Age now, yeah. but he also that's played a super band. That's, that's why I hate that people don't talk about a Perfect Circle as a super band. I yeah, mean, that's what they fucking are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, because I don't think Paz is in the band anymore. The that's bass it. player, the original bass player. I don't believe so. Yeah. I think they just kind of get a conglomerate of you know billy just assembles a band that he wants at that moment and that's who they tour with it's basically so. maynard billy and eha i feel like have been in it from yeah. the beginning yeah well eha toured with them after the first album okay so the third like the 13th step mm-hmm. dude that album's incredible that's what got me into a perfect circle so blue when that was on the radio dude, yeah i fucking love blue and i'll listen to it in the car with the kids and they're like oh like you know they're singing along too <laughs> and i'm just right. like ah but that's the one that got me into them and then Tool and then further down. Yeah, to I, I, I love The Nurse Who Loved Me. Dude, yeah. that song is great. Beautiful song. Yeah. So, but yeah, they're they're one of those bands that like I just dug the shit out of them and then they waited 11 years to put an album out or 12 years to put an album out and I'm like, I, it was all that reckless anticipation and then it came out and I'm like. That's, that's what happened to 10,000 Days because after yeah. Lateralis, they're, you know, like apex of music for them. And then 10,000 Days came out, and it was a bunch of, like, some catchy shit. Largely and Largely instrumental. Right. Largely. I, mean, I loved it because yeah. I love that sound, but there's a lot of people who hated it, Tool fans. Yeah. It, well, it's, I mean... Cause Just I wait s- till the new one comes out. Oh, if yeah. it ever does. Yeah. Well, they're actually recording yeah. now, so, I mean, that... I will believe that that record is done when, I, when I'm... When I'm not holding it in my hands anymore, but looking at it on my my computer screen. Right. Same thing with well, I mean, it was the same thing for Guns N' Roses with Chinese Democracy, but that yeah. album ended up turning. But wasn't into that a lot of uh, legal stuff about for using Tool? The, using no, 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 for uh, Chinese Democracy. I remember hearing on Q one hundred one talking about, which is a local Chicago radio, uh, about uh, Chinese Democracy being a legal issue because another band had, I think, that name for an album, and uh, uh, what's his face really wanted that name. Axel. Yeah, Excellent. I don't know what it was, but it, I I know that like he he was just he became one of those weirdo perfectionist recluses in the studio and like they were recording constantly. Apparently Sebastian Bach from Skid Row did uh background vocals on a couple tracks. I didn't listen to it. And he yeah. said that uh he, he that they had enough material to put out three albums. I wouldn't be surprised. After but like that it was how long of a span? It was a 18 time. years. Yeah. It was 18 I mean, years. That, I I find I don't find that unbelievable no all. but it was a shit record like there were three good songs on the whole record yeah and, and they performed those live the last time when i saw them in uh soldier field a couple years back and they were amazing where they? they were amazing who played mm. guitar slash slash got back with yeah, axel yeah and slash was duff, and duff, duff too, on yeah. bass yeah, it was called Never Never in This Lifetime Tour. I'm not a huge Guns N' Roses, but Slash is fantastic. I actually, unpopular opinion, I hate Axel's voice. Really? Okay. I fucking hate that Well, I mean, voice. he's got that screechy metal voice from the 80s. He's you got know? that. To me, it's about as similar as the, I don't know, the lead singer's ACDC. But oh, Bon Scott? Well, it's funny because he's singing for ACDC now because Bon, or because, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Johnson can't sing for him anymore. He's, really? Yeah, if he gets on stage, he'll be completely deaf. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I never, I couldn't stand his voice. Yeah, this is too screechy. I like it a little mm-hmm. more pure. Like Maynard's voice, yeah. a little purer. Yeah, see, I, I was a big Guns N' Roses fan, but then again, I was like coming into my musical maturity in 87, 88 when that out, al- when Appetite for Destruction came out. You know, like I was just like, fuck yeah. You know, That's I mean, awesome. it was just like, <clears throat> for me, Guns N' Roses was all about the interplay of guitars between Slash and, and, <clears throat> and Izzy Stradlin. Like if you listen to those old recordings, Slash is playing a lead part and instead of really playing rhythm, Izzy's playing a lead part, and their guitar parts just kind of interwove. And Interesting. It, yeah, and there was just there was just that raw, unbridled aggression, and just you know this. Yeah. Oh, it was just fuck you music, you yeah. know. And every Have you found anything similar to that. <clears throat> What's that? Have you found anything similar to that since? There's been a lot of stuff that's been similar to that. I mean, like early Tool was fuck you music. That's true. You know, Rage yeah. Against the Machine is fuck you music. Yeah. You know, like, there's been a lot of stuff. Like, Nirvana was totally fuck you music. Unpopular opinion. I think Nirvana would not have been as huge if Cobain didn't kill himself. They were huge before he yeah, killed himself. Yeah, they were pretty big. They were the that. biggest band on the planet. <clears throat> were they? I don't yeah. I guess. I mean, maybe I was too young, but I just, I've never... I've heard, I've just seen this with a lot of bands after their whatever guy killed himself or blew his brains out or whatever. Yeah. 
But were they that big even they when he was alive? Huge. Were they huge? If they only, if they had been born five years later and started their their career five years later, then no. they wouldn't have. It was all about context. They were the polar opposite of hair Everything. metal. Of yeah. hair metal. Okay. They seriously, because like Warrant was coming out with Cherry Pie, and then here came. You know, that smells is, like teen that is spirit. insane to think that those songs came out Not anywhere the, near each yeah. other. Yeah, because ninety one was the year of Nevermind and Metallica's Black Album. Yeah, wow. and those Even were like that's the, a big contrast, dude. Yeah, Huge. but still, those were the two biggest albums. Yeah, and uh, Ace, uh, Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusions one and two both came out in ninety one as well. Uh, so like ninety one was a bad year, badass year for music. You know, I mean, but yeah, like Nirvana came out and it was like, all right, well. Forget all those guys. You know, that was that was the death nail. You know, yeah, for sure. I never got to see them, man. I really wish I had. But I've seen Foo Fighters like a gang of times. I'm this weekend or next weekend when I go see them, it's probably 15. That's cool. 16 times that I've seen them. I'm not a huge Foo Fighters fan. I saw them once when I was in high school on the, mm-hmm. the Foozer tour. They toured with, with Weezer. Weezer. It yeah. was a great and it was a fantastic show. Yeah. show. I'd love to go see Weezer, but Foo Fighters, I don't know how much I care about seeing really? I felt yeah. that way seeing them. They, they, I, they I wouldn't rock. call myself a fan, but that was a, that was a kick-ass show. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, they fucking rock, dude. Like They're... They are the best classic rock band to continuously put records out. Like they started off as an alternative band and then just kind of morphed into becoming a stadium seventies stadium rock band. Yeah, like their music now is just like shit that I grew up with, man. I love that stuff that they're putting out now. Uh, you know, I'm. But then again, I I I'm a huge Foo Fighters fan. I have been since the beginning. Like I I just dig Dave Grohl's personality. Yeah, you know he's a good dude. Yeah, even when he was on SNL, I think he did a he did an episode or the Foo Fighters did an episode with Bon Jovi. Yeah, and Bon Jovi was being a complete dick about wanting the Foo Fighters' second song, Mm -hmm. and uh, I guess Dave Grohl and the band were actually pretty generous and didn't make much of a fuss about letting Bon Jovi do his shitty music. Yeah, (laughs) well, the interesting thing is too, like before the Foo Fighters came out. Um, Dave Grohl played with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers for a minute. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't yeah, think I knew that either. Yeah, he uh, they fired their drummer because I guess he was just fucked up, and uh, they hired in Dave Grohl. And Dave you Grohl. know it had to be bad if Tom Petty was firing somebody. Yeah. So they they <laughs> hired in Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl actually played with them on Saturday Night Live. He oh, was wow. the drummer for the Heartbreakers on that set. <laughs> Didn't Grohl play for uh, Queens of the Stone Age for uh, yeah. for an album? For an album, yeah. Yeah, and then they played uh, again on half of an album. Okay. So, but yeah, like, uh, uh, yeah, it, that that uh, songs for the Deaf album is just fucking incredible, dude. I like uh, what was there? There that was I don't know if it was before. I think it was before that. It was Era Vulgaris. That was the one after. I, I like that record or two too. after. That I like the record albums. too a lot. Yeah, Eric Vulgaris was an interesting record because yeah. it wasn't like it, Eric Vulgaris is kind of like the villains album that just came out, right? Where it's not right really a heavy metal Queens of the Stone Age. No, record. no, no, not at all. It's very. It's just kind of low key and odd. A little bit, you know. So, like, I'm still trying to get into the villains record. I don't care for it. That's not good. Which it's makes no sense. You look at the personnel on that album, oh, yeah. if you know any of those names. Are they like, a super band? They have, yeah. I don't know who those guys They are. have, I think, maybe my favorite living drummer right now, John Theodore. Oh, really? Yeah, he played on, like, the first two, maybe just the first Mars Volta record. Okay, yeah, that guy's amazing. insanely good drummer, yeah. and I feel like, no offense to Queens of the Stone Age, I feel like he's wasted in that band. Right. Did you say Mars yeah. Volta? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, yeah. Yeah, That's their first music. record. Yeah, that first record, the first two records they put out, that one and Francis the Mute, yeah. were both in, inc- the first four songs on Francis the Mute are unparalleled. The first song on that is so dude, good. Yeah, what is it, uh, Elvia? I think it's something, something like yeah, that. Dude, yeah, it's all in Spanish except for like fifteen minute, fifteen seconds of it. It's a weird dude, album. That's a bizarre record. And then like those two guys, like uh, Cedric and Omar. Omar, they just took over production duties, and nobody told them to stop. Yeah, I think they've since now come back and said like firing John Theodore on drums was the worst thing that they did, and it was yeah. like the beginning of a downward spiral for right. them. Well, yeah. they're back in at the drive-in anyway. Yeah. So you know, who knows if we'll ever get another Mars Volta record? Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I'd be fine without it. Yeah, I saw him on the Francis the Mute tour at the at the Riviera. That's cool. Amazing. I saw him, I saw him two albums after that, and it was Did still you? really good. Oh, it wasn't yeah. the same thing. Yeah, they're incredible band. Yeah, just band, I just yeah, their love, music is so abstract. It's that's the all. that's what I dig about them, man. Yeah. It's just like I I like that kind of music that really challenges me. Not in the sense of this isn't something that I'm going to listen to, 
but I like that challenge, but I also like the challenge of like this is really a difficult listen, but it's rewarding. Yeah. You know, like just the hearing a band that can fuck with time changes and mm-hmm. key in the middle of like three like in the middle of a three minute song change tempo, time change and key like eight times. Right. You know, like, not just that, but also like that you're just talking about basically prog rock in general, yeah. which I understand. I'm 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 all about that. Mm-hmm. Even like thematically, if you ever look like read any of their lyrics, it's like complete nonsense. Do you know the backstory to their first album? No. De Laos in the Comatorium? Yeah, no. yeah. So uh the band that Omar and Cedric were in before Mars Volta at the drive in, they mm-hmm. split up and their rhythm guitar player started a different band that never Sparta. Yes. I saw them Jim open Ward. Yeah, I saw them open up for Incubus. No kidding. Yeah, they're playing. They're playing at the new. I call it the new, just because I haven't been to it. I only went to the old Bottom Lounge. They're playing okay. there in a couple of weeks, and that's weird. It's Sparta? gonna be like a yeah. It's gonna be like a time warp for me. I listened to them a ton in high school. Really? So Jim Ward, head of Sparta, his brother stayed friends with Omar and Cedric, and I guess was in Mars Volta before that first album came out. Okay. Hardcore like heroin user. Really. But. And while he was like, while he was using, he would keep a like diary and just write these crazy, abstract, almost nonsensical things. He passed away. I think he overdosed. Oh, really? And either Omar or Cedric got that diary, and that's and stuff that they were taken from that diary is Became like the, the complete nonsense of the last in the comatorium. Nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty out there. Well, not only that, Flea played on that album. Yeah, so did John Frusciante on a couple songs. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. From uh, two guys from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, Flea yeah. I knew, but I didn't know who the second guy John was. John Frusciante was the one that recorded all the good f- Red Hot Chili Pepper <laughs> oh, records. Okay, well, which is well, how far do you go? How I far go do you go back. in the records? I'm t- yeah, I, I I stopped listening to him after Stadium Arcadium. Stadium yeah. Arcadium, that was the double that, disc, correct? That, yeah, that one can suck a dick. I hate that fucking record. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, like there's like like a single solid record of good music on that. The rest of it was just like adult contemporary rock. Yeah. Like, which is what they have become. And even the Getaway or the Breakaway or whatever that last record that came out, like the lead single, like had this ripping bass line. I was like, oh, man, they're back. And then I, I bought the record. And I'm like, oh, I got to sell this back. Oh, my like, God. That sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But like, I like, like, I love Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Yeah. Like that album is incredible. Even the weird uh, album that they did, the metal album that they did with... Uh, uh, Dave Navarro, One yep. Hot Minute. That yes. was a great record. Yep. Now I got to listen to this shit, dude. In high school, I think I was, I think that's when Stadium Arcadium came out. Okay. And then I didn't, mean you said it's the shit on the radio. Or yeah, I was in college when that came out. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I remember enjoying it, but that's because I wasn't really familiar with their music besides what's on the radio. Yeah. I was really into, I was in junior high at the time. That tells you how old I am. I was in eighth grade when Californication came out and I okay. really liked it then. Then I hated it in high school, hated it through college. I've since gone back to that album. Californication's it's pretty good. a good, solid record. Yeah. So is By The Way. Yeah. That's a solid record too. Stadium Arcadium, not so good. No, nah, I don't Stadium care Arcadium for after Californication? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know was, their timeline. Californication yeah, was, was like 98 or 99, I think. Yeah, okay. I was in college when that came out. I'm and then 2000. By the way, I was in 98, I want to say. And then uh, By The Way came out in 2001. I want to say because I was yeah, still working like at that. the record store when that one came out, and uh, well, I was working at the record store when Californication came out what as well. What record store did you work? At? I worked at a independent store called Kiss the Sky out hmm. in Batavia. Cool, and they're still there That's twenty-two awesome. years later, and they're still out there. Nice, slinging it. I worked for Sam Goody in Musicland as well. Oh, yeah, I did record stores for like ten years before this big boy job I got. So, <laughs> but yeah, man, like they were so good. I saw them with the Foo Fighters. Nice, um, down at SIU. That'd be a fun show. That's I don't even. I, I don't. I don't listen to a lot of Red, lot of red Hot Chili Peppers, but I, I go to that. And the craziness is, Muse opened up for them. <gasps> I'm so glad you brought them that's up. That's weird. Yeah. Do you hate them or like them? I appreciate them, but they're not a go-to for me. Like I liked uh, Black Holes and Revelations. Fantastic album. Incredible record. Yeah. Um, even the one after that was pretty good. But like, how many? Third Law? No. Was it? It might have been Third Law. No, 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 no. It was, um, oh, hell, I don't know. My my sister-in-law got it for me for Christmas the year. I think I got it for out. my birthday, so. Yeah. But, like. Was it the one with madness on it? Yeah, okay. I think so. But it was one of those where it's like, dude, you're not Freddie Mercury. Oh. He's boy. a really good singer, He's a, He is. Oh, he's, man, he's a fantastic you... singer. 
Like I will give you that. He's a great singer, but at the same time, I'm just like don't I don't I don't want to be put in a position where I have to defend Muse because the, yeah they defend, put out they put out one record and there was I don't I couldn't I should look it up but they put out a single ahead of that record and it sounded like a Queen ripoff. Yeah, it was not oh. not not good Queen either. Yeah, I wonder which one it was. I'm looking it up right now because I'm really <laughs> curious. Um, uh, I don't I like I don't think it's their first album. I don't even know. If Origins of Symmetry was amazing. I like Origins of Symmetry. Newborn is a fantastic song. Showbiz maybe was the one you're thinking. Of, that's the first album i'm not familiar with that one the, the one after song. origin of symmetry uh is it absolution yeah i like that record a lot yeah that was that one's brought what well, got them on the radio yes yeah that's the one that got them on my radio i bought that on vinyl from record breakers when it was oh god when it, when it was in south barrington before yeah. they moved to the city yeah and actually it's funny because um record breakers we always considered ourselves at Kiss the Sky to be their sister store. Oh, okay. Because um, I, my heart was broken when they closed up and moved and opened up Reggie's and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think Cletus still runs the joint. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, Black Holes and Re- Re- Revelations. That one came out in '06, and that was a great record. And then they released, damn, they released like 17 EPs after that. Hmm. And then The Resistance. That yeah, was we, the album. So The Resistance had it was okay. That's when they went from a easier sound. That's that's when I felt like they became a little bit more esoteric. So because the the lead, I forgot his name, Bellamy something. Yeah, he's awesome at the piano, and I think that's where he started doing more. He started doing more on the piano. Mm-hmm. Um, what the fuck is up with all these bands doing more on the piano? That just ruins it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like I'm a huge Arctic Monkeys fan, and this last album, this Space Hotel transient bullshit, sure is like. It's a piano record, and I'm like, look, I'm with you when you started doing like the weird kind of uh, uh, Dr. Dre inspired AM record, which was a great record. But I, dude, I can't get into this new Arctic Monkeys record. I just can't. And it's like, look, I, I'm all, you know, look, if you want to be Tori Amos, that's fine. But call you, just do a solo record. You know, yeah. but like for me with Muse, it was just too much of like, look, how many times is nobody going to take you out alive? How many times are you <laughs> going to be like the resist? How many? Look, you, look, I get it. You read 1984 right. and, you know, <laughs> I get it. But like thematically, it, they haven't really. They've been on the same page for most of. Yeah. A lot of their music. Yeah. I agree. And I get it. Like, look, you live under a democratic theocracy or a. Right. Uh, oligarchy over right. in london or whatever kind of government they have over the, there uh, uh, uh constitutional something monarchy, monarchy. yeah some constitutional kind of, monarchy yeah yes, constitutional, constitutional monarchy, monarchy. Yes. yeah i'm not smart tonight <laughs> that's um, grade school i mean i just remember here like look grade. stupid i learned that <laughs> Listen, in grade school i had a friend who made fun of me for like wanting to talk about the different types you know like i was like oh yeah there's a democracy and there's oligarchy and he's like I learned that shit in sixth grade. I'm like, well, fuck you. I learned it in high school or whatever. Right. But yeah, it's like, look, I get it. You live over there and blah, 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 blah. But come on, man. Can you get kidnapped or something so you can have something else to write you, about? You know what? He got. A, it sounds like he got obsessed with Banksy and just stood with that. Really? I don't, I'm making yeah. it up, but I'm saying like Banksy's always like, you know, social commentary, the stuff right. that he graffitied or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like even their latest, Muse's latest album was, for me, hot garbage. Like mm-hmm. I just didn't like their sound. Right. They tried to be gritty and it just, it was... Not Muse. It was Chevelle. Oh, God. That's what it sounded, because Chevelle's latest album was Screamo, and it's hot garbage. They're, really? they're local, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, yeah. they are. And they're that local. first album, I actually really enjoyed. They tried too hard to sound like Tool, but I actually enjoyed uh, Point Number One. Uh-huh. That album was, I mean, it was pretty good for their first album. Right. And then they had some other, yeah. So I feel like we glossed over, and we're talking about Muse, and people always jokingly compare the two. I, I feel like we need I we owe each other a conversation sure. about Radiohead. Radiohead, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. I am going to see them. I I have I promised myself I wouldn't, and then when I saw them twice at at the United Center, I was like, this is too good. I gotta go again. Yeah, like I like Radiohead. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. I just haven't liked them recently. Sure, and I hear that all the time. Like I, you know, I'm. Look, I understand that they're never going to make a rock record again. No. You know, they're done with that and they're bored with it. I mean, you could watch what was the the documentary they put out right after OK Computer. Oh, not seven television commercials, but it was like a I I wish I was here or I something like that. I think it was called I wish I was here. That or that might have, was that meeting people is easy? Meeting people is easy. That's what my tattoo is from. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cuz they're like uh, like you just see Tom York bored on a bus, bored playing music. Yeah. I'm like, all right, we get it. You don't want to be a rock band anymore. Okay, that's fine. You know, 
Um, I didn't. Pablo Honey was too blur for me. There were some good songs on but Pablo Honey, but it was like Honey. bad blur. But yeah, it was it was very Brit rock. Yeah. But then again, everything was Brit rock, and at that point, coming from from there, the Benz is a classic. Mm-hmm. The Ben, there's there's not a shit song on the Benz. I feel the same way about OK Computer. OK Computer was sort of the hybrid, them turning strange, but not yeah. quite, not quite, I'm not there. quite there yet. But like, still. That was that's another one. That's a classic record. There's yeah. not a shit song on the record. Yeah, that was when they started like writing songs. And when I heard them, obviously years later, I didn't start listening to them till right before I went into high school. So I would have mm-hmm. been fourteen. Sure. Um, but I knew vaguely of Paranoid Android. I was somewhat familiar sure. with that song. But that was the first record I started listening to. And even now, seventeen years later, it's... I I can't understand how they could write some of those songs. No, not at all. And to this day. Like I like I told you on Facebook, I saw them at the Rosemont Theater. Yeah, on tour for that album, and they opened up with Airbag. That's cool. And like I don't understand. Like you can't understand how they wrote that. I can't understand how they pulled it off live. Right. The only song that they did not do from that album was Electioneering, which they hate that song apparently. Dude, I love that yeah, song. So it's my I. favorite song in the record. Yeah. And I was so bummed that they didn't play it. And they even played like B sides, like crazy. They played Pearly. That's cool. Um, they played. I want to say anyone could play guitar, and they're like, "This is off our first album. We're really sorry about it." <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you know what? It was something that you wrote. Don't be. Don't apologize to me. You know, I get it. You're British, okay? But don't come on. It's on brand. Yeah. So, but then like, okay, or uh, Kid A came out, and I was behind Kid A. Yeah. I liked Kid A. It was a weird ambient album, and I dug it. And I even liked. Uh, Amnesiac. Amnesiac. Yeah. I, I actually liked Amnesiac better than I liked uh, Kid A. So, for your sake. Yeah. So, I'll tell you, I've only listened to Hail to the Thief. That's cool. Hail to the Thief is one of my Rainbows. favorite records. Uh, Hail to the Thief, again, I didn't really get into the whole uh, when he got really, like, um, abstract. So, mm-hmm. I really liked Where I End and You Begin. Love that song. Yeah. yeah that's actually one of my favorite songs. Oh, what's the Just, one that goes, little rain drops, little rain drops? That sit down, stand up. I fucking love that song, I don't man. like that at Dude, all. I saw, and I love Radiohead. <laughs> I saw them. Uh, um, the only other time I saw Radiohead, they were at Alpine Valley, and they did that yeah. song live. And I was just like, I would, I would actually really like to see that song live. Yeah. All right. You made a top ten on your Facebook, Bob, uh, and I think Kid A was your like number seven or eight. Uh, yeah, that was in no particular order, but yes. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Yep. Anyway, so for a person who's more naive on Radiohead, what do you recommend an album to start with to That's... get pure? Is that a crappy question? It's no, no. Is I mean, for a lot of bands, that wouldn't be. Um, but they've they've changed. You look at the first album and where they are now. It's, sure. you wouldn't you wouldn't even know that they're the same people. No. So that's what I was about to get at. Their first like three albums, relatively straightforward, like rock guitar rock. rock albums. Okay, computer kind of towed that line a little bit, and then three, four years later, they put out Kid A, and it was just like computer what music. The f- what the fuck is this? I, was, I guess the, I guess yeah. it com- completely bombed in the UK, but a lot, but a lot of people in the United States were well, real big on Kid A. Uh, and wow. from what I've heard cuz when I was working at the record store, I had a kid that was all into electro. He was like Billy. All he listened <laughs> to was electronica and and industrial music and stuff like that. And he was just like I don't I don't know why everybody likes Kid A and Amnesiac. Autecker was doing this stuff 20 years ago. Sure. Which is probably why it bombed over in the UK cuz yeah. they'd already heard shit like that. Right. You know, so they're like, "All right, so you you recorded three epic albums or two epic albums out of the three and now you're releasing some shit that somebody did 20 years ago." Yeah. And so they they did Kid A, which was eh, it had some guitar stuff on it, it wasn't a guitar focused album. And then like a year later they put out Amnesiac, which they recorded at the same time. And that was generally kind of even more strange music. Mm-hmm. Um, it was headphones music. Oh, yeah. Okay, because I listened to, I think, after you posted, I was like, you know, I'm like, I knew I was going to meet you guys. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, listen, I'm really curious. You know, I, I've always appreciated uh, uh, Radiohead's play with rhythms. So yeah. that's why I've, I was like, oh, well, I've never listened to all their stuff, so might as well get into it. And I listened to, I think it was Kid A. And um, yeah, it was very chill if i remember very, very much so yeah i listened very to it in the so. car so i mean i did i need to maybe listen with headphones to maybe get a better sound of it but um because tool was a lot we played a lot with rhythms uh, mm-hmm. that's why i enjoyed a lot of radiohead too sure and i don't think they're as 
technically minded as as tool and most like metal or post metal like bands. But right. See, didn't yeah. Tom York not? He doesn't like. Didn't he like not know how to play the piano and he just like taught himself? Yeah. Yeah. He still. I don't. I still don't think he really knows how to read sheet music. Mm-mm. It's just well, all awesome. by ear. That just that's oh, that's, so that's being British. Yeah. Like, n- well, but I mean, like Jimmy Page, he, I don't think he he none technically of the Beatles. knows what he's doing on guitar. He just knows it by feel and sound. No, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, J- Jimmy Page is amazing, but yeah. he's sloppy as hell. Oh yeah, he's a he's a garage rock guitar player. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, but um, but yeah, one of my favorite songs. I think it was on Amnesiac. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Tree Fingers. That was on Kid A. Okay, so that's on Kid A. That's and it's straight just, up ambient. Just, like it's just sound. organs. It's yeah. just beautifully or it's just a beautifully layered organ sound. But like because uh, Amnesiac had Morning Bell on it and Knives Out. Dude. Actually, those, they both have Morning Bell. Yeah, they're just they different, different versions. versions. Yeah. But like those like I dug those and I really liked Hail to the Thief because I think it married um OK Computer, and then the weird shit that they were doing with Amnesiac and, kind of. and Kid A. So it was like you, you had more guitar-driven stuff, but you had all these weird electronic beats and stuff kind of weaving through the album. Yeah, I yeah. I take issue with that album a little bit because I think like Tom York, I think that's his like weakest like vocal performance. Mm-hmm. He sounds kind of low energy bored almost yeah. but the songs themselves are mostly fantastic yeah. like they're theirs on that record they're theirs like fucking love that song, song. Yeah. yeah but then they put out in rainbows yeah which is that's but if that's you're gonna listen to radiohead good. that's usually what it, like if you've never heard a note that they've ever played that's usually what i tell them to listen to because it's probably the, the easiest to listen to didn't they self-produce that one yeah. yeah, and then they sold it for they whatever. They put, they were one of the first yeah. ones that said, just pay us what you want. I think I paid them $3 for yep. the record. And they didn't announce it ahead of time. You knew like two days before it dropped, yeah. which is kind of cool. And I, I dug that, Yeah, but like, I don't want to listen to Radiohead play jazz chords. I don't think it was that jazzy. Well, like, it was just very... Like, again, they went back to more of a, a band. You can shit on them as much as you want. I don't mind. Well, no, and I, I don't want to shit on them because <laughs> I do like them as a band, but just, like, I want to know what the fuck they're thinking. You yeah. know, like, like it was just very laid back, very mellow, and, like, very clean, super clean guitar tones throughout the entire record. Yeah, quite a bit. And it just, it just seemed very boring and uninspired compared to the five albums that they put out prior, or the six albums they put out prior to that. Sure. But then, like, uh, King of Limbs came out. Yeah. King of Limbs wasn't as bad as everybody shit on it. Yeah. I actually enjoyed King of Limbs. I, I thought that was I think pretty it's okay. decent. Not my favorite. And uh, The Moonshaped Pool, I'm just like... See, I do like that record, but it's... It's, it's, it's dinner it's, music. It's a, it's a straight-up bummer, though. It's fucking dinner music. Like, how can you have a song called Burn the Witch and have it be just an orchestral number? Yeah. It's just, I just can't get into it. Like, that's something that I can put on in the background and not be like, can you turn this off? I, I think that, because um, with this conversation, I'm conversation in air quotes, it, I think, started when I mentioned them on Facebook. Yes. And then And then you chimed in with... with Pearl Jam. I suspect that our experiences would probably be exactly the same Although you're probably more into Radiohead than I am into Pearl Jam, sure. I'm I, I enjoy their music. It's fine if it comes on random on Spotify. I'm cool with it. Right. I won't skip it. Um, I've listened to it all. I don't continue to listen to it all. Right. But I bet if you saw Radiohead now, because I guarantee that they were very different in the late '90s than they are now. Yeah. Much bigger production now, which I'm a complete sucker for. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I went and saw Pearl Jam, I'm sure I would fall in love with them. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, they, they, they put on a hell of a show. Yeah. I, I Radiohead is who I'm speaking Oh, okay. Of. But Radio puts on a hell of a show. Like, but it's a, it is a full-scale production. Oh, for so sure. So there's all kinds of manipulation. It's very... They could get away with playing, like, like shit, and I would probably still like it and still... They're very Pink Floyd now when it comes to their, yeah. their performances and their light show. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you from a musical standpoint. Would you sure. know if they played like shit? Like how I'm curious how much experience you guys have in music. You I said have quite a bit. okay. I wasn't sure. Like, would you know if something was off? Okay, so like, oh yeah, or was off. But would you hear it, especially if you're there live? If you, yeah, you yes. can definitely tell. Yeah, I like, mean, they're not, they're not. So they don't play when they go on to a Radiohead. I'm talking about. They don't do uh, the same set every night. They do like the first first two maybe three songs are the same that's the way it's been on the for the last two tours and then it's 23 songs two and a half hours of 
whatever they're pulling out, a pull, whatever they decided to play earlier that day. Much the same with Pearl Jam. And they so, have a completely different set list every single day. And so night. I would not by any means say that Radiohead are a sloppy band, but they do make mistakes, well, and right. I think it's kind of hilarious when they do, especially like when he forgets words and then just makes them up and says fuck while he's trying to remember the words. I, I like that. Well, that's, but, a, that's the thing about going to see live music, though. Yeah. It's one of those things that's just so perfect about it because, like, you do hear those little nuances and those little fuck-ups and stuff. Oh, yeah. And, like, I love them. Yeah. Like, when, when you know, I, I've seen Pearl Jam. This will be the 13th time this summer yeah. that I've seen Pearl Jam. Not the 13th time this summer, but the 13th time that I've That'd seen Pearl Jam. That'd be pretty impressive if you follow yeah. them. Didn't yeah. You? Well, they've been in Europe, and I don't have that kind of money. Um, but yeah, Pearl, Pearl Jam local is expensive enough. Oh God, damn, dude! <laughs> Seriously, I think my tickets were one hundred and forty dollars a piece. Pretty pricey. Yeah, and hard to get. But I'm also general admission. What? What? Nice. So, and those nice. are like on StubHub. Those are going for like six grand. Yeah. And wow. Yeah, I got them. I'm. I was in the fan. I joined the fan club specifically because I was not missing them at Wrigley again. I've got a close friend who's a, also a pretty serious Pearl Jam fan, mm-hmm. and for his sake, I like not the fan club. I didn't join, but like I think through Ticketmaster they did a lottery. The I signed up for it. Yeah. Didn't get it though. Right. Yeah. Those tickets were tough to get. Yeah. You know, and uh, but they do again. Same thing. Completely. Not even the first couple songs are the same. Like every set list is absolutely unique to that that particular show yeah and that's cool and you know there are times where eddie fucks up and forgets the words i've been to plenty of shows where he's just like i forgot the fucking words you know (laughs) that's awesome and i'm like you've been singing the song for 20 (laughs) years dude you know Um, the only reason i ask is because i used to sing choir and uh at trinity where i went to school and uh obviously not a good comparison but sort of and like we'll sing and halfway through our you know conductor will stop us play the chord the you know what key we're supposed to be in mm-hmm. and we'll be super flat but you i i, I wouldn't hear it and i feel right. like i have a decent ear so i mean those I, bands when they're playing they've got monitors they can hear themselves just like we can hear ourselves right now well right. you gotta figure yeah. yourself when you're singing in a choir such as that you're also hearing everybody else yeah, yeah, around yeah. you so you're playing your strength to their strengths as well it's quite a bit m- more controlled i think when you're in that sort of scenario sure as a so band. they would know if they fucked up that's why i'm oh, so yeah. curious how you oh, guys oh. know because uh, of course you, they know you know like obviously you're not playing the right chord you can i mean because for a lot of those people who go to those shows they've heard those songs hundreds, hundreds of, of times, times. Right. yeah yeah and been listening to them for decades in some cases seriously like with yeah. pearl jam and radiohead both i mean we're talking 27 years for both bands didn't pablo honey came out in 91 i want to say yeah so yeah i, I was like, four years old oh my god <laughs> wow yeah i was listening to you know i've been listening to pearl jam since 91 when the first album came out so i've been listening to the same band for 27 years yeah yeah, yeah i guess that would make sense I'm so yeah. fucking old <laughs> yeah because you're 40 yeah i'm, I'm 40. 35 almost and you're 30 I just turned 31 yeah. wow. okay yeah so we're babies man about a decade we span about a decade yeah um, 31's a baby come on <laughs> dude when you when you hit 40 you're like damn 35 is young. Yes. <laughs> when you wake up and you're like, my arm hurts. Why does my arm hurt? I think I slept wrong. That's, uh, yeah, dude, totally. See, my experience with concerts is, um, so I got into, because of my best friend, I got into uh, metalcore. Okay. So like, you, so like I, what kind of bands? As I Lay Dying, August okay. Burns Red, that sort of stuff. Oh, the, the shit where they sound like they're vomiting into the mic or they're screaming so much that you, you know, can't understand what they're saying? But, well, that's part of it, though, is like, so you I mean the guitarist, they'll, they'll riff a lot. Dude, yeah, their guitar players are insanity. And drummers. Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, so these guys are, you know, fantastic. Um, They're playing like 300 beats a minute, what, like, I'm, as a I drummer. They call them blast beats. Yeah. That's, see, I thought the blast beats are in a, in a, it's a different genre than metalcore. But anyways. Uh, all right. I, I'm not. Grindcore. A, that's in grindcore. Oh, I, I know, think. I know some grindcore. See, um, in flames. What are they? In flames, like doom metal or death metal or something like that. I think they're melodic death metal. Okay. I think death metal uses a lot metal more and like that that subgenres. Those fans go nuts. Oh, with yeah. Well, yeah. So that before even be- so, I'm a pharmacist. The day before, the week <laughs> before I started working as a pharmacist, I went to a metal show and and you know moshed rescued and- like 17 people from oxy overdoses. Did not. I took their oxys. And uh, no, so they're but all, they're all on PCP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. No, but so I, I moshed and like I uh, crowd surfed and like, but I didn't hear the music. My buddy's like, oh, did you hear them play, you know, song A? And I'm like, no, I don't know what the hell See, you're talking you were, about. You were wrapped up in the experience of the crowd. There's something just, there's something, something about that. that but, too, yeah. but if I was standing in the back, you know, just drinking a beer, I could hear it a little sure. better. But it's so fucking loud. 
Dude, I never go to concerts without earplugs anymore. I have never once remembered, and I always regret it. I always have them in my pocket. I've got a box of them upstairs. I buy boxes of them at a time. Any band? Any band. I could go see like the Quietest Country Band. I'm putting earplugs in. It's wise. Yeah, and it's. From, I never did in my my early twenties and teens when I was going to the Metro and seeing Mud Honey and like wringing my head coming out at the end of it all. I wish I had. Because I feel that I can hear what's going on in the room a lot better with earplugs in. Because oh, it's almost, undoubtedly, it acts yeah. as a compressor. It takes out the really high ends, the really low ends. You feel the low end, but the high ends aren't like like beating you against the skull. Yeah, yeah. I have a buddy who's an audio tech guy, and he says, uh, you're stupid if you ever play drums without ear, earplugs. Mm-hmm. And the same sort of thing if you go to a concert without them. You're every time losing a little bit of hearing. Yeah. So I, you know, it's the been only, a while since I've been to one. The but. only time I don't wear earplugs at shows is if I'm on a hill in an outdoor venue. Mm. If I'm in the pavilion, I'll wear earplugs because it's still pretty loud in the pavilion. But sure. when you're sitting on the hill on a, in an outdoor, like we've seen, my wife and I went to go see Pink last summer. And I sat on the hill. I'm like, well, this is fine. You know, <laughs> dude, it, you chuckle. Like I love some pink. Oh, that's not why I'm chuckling. Oh, okay. I just like the it's it's fine. Right. It's just pink. It's fine. Yeah, but like I, dude, I went as a casual fan to see her on the last album tour with my wife yeah. before we had kids. And I was like, yeah, I like some of her songs, dude. I left that show a fan. Like she is a. She's got a great voice. Ma- she got a great voice. Puts on a great stage show. I bet. And she's just amazing live. There's a lot of pop acts that I don't listen to, but I would totally go see. Dude, she is like the Pat Benatar and Joan Jett of our generation. Like, she truly is. Like, she's incredible live. And then I got pissed off. She came back around and was charging $88 for the nosebleeds at the United Center. I'm like, go Uh. fuck yourself with those ticket prices. (laughs) It's not her charging that. Uh, Well, I'm sure she has something to do with it. Well, I'm sure she wants a certain, you know, pay. But, you know, that's that's a different politic. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I fucking just dig it, man. I just... So my father-in-law, actually, so this is so sad. So he introduced me to Zeppelin. He introduced me to Black Sabbath. And when I listen to Black Sabbath, I'm like, holy shit, this is so awesome. Um, Because I was like, this is a very similar sound. I don't know which album it was because it was years ago. But it was very similar to what Tool sounded like to me. And I'm like, this is fucking 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So I loved it. Anyways, his favorite uh, artist is a guy named Joe Bonamassa. Oh, Joe Bonamassa is incredible. So he's playing... um, in Moline or wherever, right by us. Mm-hmm. And I was telling my father in law when I got the email, I'm like, I'm like, let's go. You really, you know, you this is your favorite guy. I like his music. He's really good on the guitar. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't want to spend that money. I'd rather watch it on PBS or whatever. I'm like, what? I'm like, the experience of going to the concert over watching it on TV, I'm like, why do I need to explain this to you? Yeah. He's a guy who beats himself up for, for spending 150 bucks on whatever, mm-hmm. but it's like, let's go. I'll buy you the fucking tickets. Yeah, right. Let's go. Yeah, dude. Like, there's something about. Like, you know, I don't have it either, either of you been to Ravinia? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh fucking hate Ravinia. See, I like Is that it. Why you brought uh, it up? Yeah. <laughs> to shit on it. To shit on it. I like it, but it's not like a even close to a typical concert no, going experience at all. I, I went a couple. I went two summers ago to go see Lauren Hill. Yeah. And I had never been there before, so I had no idea what to expect. Were you on the lawn or in the pavilion? No, we were in the lawn. Yeah, so yeah. You don't, you're not going to see anything. You're just no. going to listen. You're yeah, and at around. that point, I'm like, fuck this. I could have played the CD in my backyard and had a cookout. See, and, I kind of like fine. it, though. Like, I went and saw uh, David Byrne was on tour with St. Vincent. Okay. They were supporting an album that they did together. Sure. David Byrne from The Talking Heads. Yeah, David Byrne's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw him a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna go see him next month. Going to Colorado to go see nice. Red Rocks. Yeah, I'm really see, excited. See, that must be the joy of not having children. That's Just the joy of not having children. Pick up and go, yep. man. Yep. It's yeah. I, I have to explain. <laughs> to, yeah, I have to explain to Bob too. I'm like, yeah, I put the kids to bed at eight. They're wide awake, and it's like nine thirty when I was telling him about it. And so we went. We sat on the lawn for David Byrne, St. Vincent. I wasn't like a huge fan of that album, but it was okay. And I knew that they were going to do St. Vincent songs that I enjoyed, and then mm. they were going to do some Talking Head songs. I, we were like in the back. It was also like super casual. Most people were just talking the whole time. I thought it was nice. I didn't pay 60, 70 bucks for it. I paid 30 bucks to be on the lawn. Yeah, right. I like it for that. I, but I, I knew what to expect going in. I knew right. I wasn't going to see the show. Yeah, and that's the one. Like, And we even stood close to the pavilion, like yeah. right behind the pavilion, yeah, 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 so yeah. we could see what was going even on. Even that's and not I'm ideal. Just like, uh. But yeah. like, I'm like, dude, you catered. You had people, like, you paid people, and they catered your little section of the grass. Oh, yeah. It, the people watching is hilarious. It's fucking annoying. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> See, we went They like candles. Was... Yeah, I'm like, what are you doing? Just go home. <laughs> That's you're awesome. You're wasting, like, you're making me angry that you wasted your money. Like, 
I don't know. Like I could go. I, you know what? I could. Go, I could justify seeing the symphony there. Oh yeah, sure. That would I've, be I've gone there for that too. Perfect. That that I would think be I saw, the perfect I saw him, for that. I saw the Chicago Symphony Orchestra play like the score to like Fellowship of the Ring. It was yeah. pretty great. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, like I would like to see them because they. I know that they've also done like the Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Game like video game music and stuff like that. I would totally go to Ravinia to see that. I would. That's that type. Like it's just that very upscale kind of place oh yeah that's like the highland park in general yeah yeah and it was a bitch getting in and out trying yeah. to find parking like, oh right that area sucks yeah, yeah there's sucked. a lot of walking and the only experience i have at ravinia it was hot and muggy yeah so i hated it because i was warm and sweaty and i, and I think it was nickel creek i don't I'm not, I'm not really familiar with too many you know that that type of country blue grass or whatever blue grass country yeah but um so i didn't care about the music it was hot and muggy and i'm like i want to go this yeah. is, uh, but I mean, I like the atmosphere. If it was a band sure. I liked, or like, like you said, you know, the Chicago Symphony, or if they were playing the Legend of Zelda shit, yeah. oh my god! It's, I mean, I think if you even look at like the the lineup every season, they know that they're catering to that crowd. Oh, for sure. Yeah, sense. like adult, contemporary, easy listening, and then classical stuff, and yeah. like the uh, XRT crowd. Yeah. You know which? What's XRT? WXRT. It's ninety three point one. It's oh, the, oh, oh. A, it's like the adult alternative station. And it's it, like I found myself more and more like listening to that now because yep. like I can't I turn at Q and one I'm like I don't know what's going on yep. here I'm so old I'm the same way like I don't I don't listen to the radio very often but I don't when I do either. yeah like and then they took the loop away from us yep Ugh. oh did that become a Christian station or something yeah they got bought out they, by they some all Christian. became Christian stations yeah. see when Q one one went defunct what they did the last day was they played a uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers song on repeat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't remember what the name of the song was. I think it was on Danny California, whatever yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that album was. But uh, I was like, why is this song still on like an hour later? And I realized that Q1 was fucking with people because they right. complained about how much Red Hot Chili Peppers was on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those like terrestrial radio has just gone to shit. Yeah. And I can't afford like we don't we're not going to pay for, you know, satellite radio. No. So. Yeah, I like Apple Music. So like when Bob works. talks about a you know uh, a Radiohead, I can just pick out an album for sure, or even just listen on random. Yeah, and just whatever. Enjoy absolutely, it. absolutely. See, it's, Ter it's great for consumers, terrible for artists. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I feel like there's no going back. But then Pandora's, again, like Pandora's box is open now. Yeah, but at this point, if I find something that I like enough, I'll go out and buy it. I'll buy I'll buy like a record of it. Yeah, yeah I'll like, go buy it on vinyl. Behind me, I've got uh, the new Foo Fighters on vinyl. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I got a Beastie Boys back there on vinyl nice. for uh, Hot Sauce Committee Part 2. And then I've got um, the new uh, Arctic Monkeys that I bought directly through them because it was on silver vinyl. I'm like, that's dope. That's cool. So, But mm. the album's not. <laughs> I, I like. I don't listen to, listen to my records as often as I should. I just I like the having the giant artwork and yeah, it in my hands. And, for sure. Yeah. It becomes an event and oh, it's yeah. for like an occasion to put put, the, put it on the turntable and all Crack that. it open, you smell it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it, I it, like dust off the record before mm -hmm. I put the needle down. Yeah, I got to get my record player hooked back up ever since the flood back, you know, before my first son was born. I just, I'm still trying to get this all put together down yeah. here. And it's, it's tough, man. It's, just, it's hard to have like 10 minutes to do anything anymore. It's so true, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. Even watching, like, when we were talking about watching Clone Wars, um, it's a wrap it back to that. So, like, when you asked, when Bob asked me, what about Star Wars, that, you know, as an adult yeah, watching yeah, yeah. it? So, I'm dead serious. It's, re it's relationality, as, as that, that's a word. Uh, same thing with going to a concert and what I was telling my father in law. I'm like, you're going to a place where all these people around you love the music too and you're enjoying it together i think there's a phenomenon oh in yeah that. it's like church well right and and it's the same thing with like watching clone wars and talking to somebody yeah i'll read i'll read books i'll listen to audiobooks and it's like okay i'm done with it i have nobody to talk to about it so i'm right. like this is kind of like not a waste of time but you know it's not they're not listening to classics that's why I, we started the netflix and chill because tom like watches all these movies going back and forth on the train to chicago to work yeah he's like i just want to talk to somebody about these because it's fun yeah I'll, I'll listen to my wife's suggestions and not i'm not trying to be a misogynist it's not the most it's not stuff that i'm necessarily the most interested in but like we can talk about it and be like oh did you like what happened to this character sure. and how this theme went and dude my my wife is a trooper she's gone to both of the saga films of the star wars films with me so like I I'll, I'll give her credit with that for that. <laughs> like she went she went with me like when uh The Dark Knight Rises comes out came yeah. out. We uh like a, 3 days later we went on our honeymoon after that. 
Nice. But she went with me to the movies to go see it. Maybe it was the day after we, or two days after. I don't know. It was like Dark Knight Rises comes out, and then like shortly thereafter, within a matter of 24 to 48 hours, we're on a plane to go into Thailand. Wow. And she went with me like a fucking trooper. Nice. And that was like almost a three hour movie. We didn't get, and it was a midnight showing. We didn't oh, even get no. out of there until like quarter to three. And my Man. wife was just like zombified. And she doesn't even give a shit about <laughs> Batman or most of the stuff that I've been to. You know, like I, you got to give that up, give it up, man. What's the one with uh, Heath Ledger? Oh, the, the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. So yeah. that came out on when Brittany and I got married in 2008. And that's when that movie came out. But so when we were in Aruba on our on our honeymoon, um, we decided we're like, let's go see a movie. We ended up seeing Wally because she was not going to watch. Wally I like was Wally. Such a good movie. I like Wally a lot. I love that movie, and I love to be able to say like I watched the Pixar movie mm-hmm. on my honeymoon. But nice. I mean, that's that that is a beautiful movie, and I'm glad I saw that over For Heath sure. Ledger's. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, I'd see both. I saw both of them in the theaters. So me me too. But I'm saying great. on my honeymoon with my yeah. wife. I mean, yeah. I I dragged my wife to a movie on our honeymoon. We went to Seattle, and uh, I think it was right at the end of its run, and I hadn't gone and seen it yet. I'm a big Wes Anderson fan. Okay, sure. And uh, Grand Budapest Hotel was out, so nice. I dragged her to the theater for that. She liked it, but she wasn't enthusiastic about yeah, it. Yeah, that one I have yet to like slog my way through. I like it. Like Moonlight Kingdom was the last one I saw, and I'm yeah. like, that one's it was kind of cute. Camp one, Is that yeah. The yeah. Kid camp? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the last one of his that I saw that I was just really like, that was a fucking great movie. Was the Darjeeling Limited? Yeah, yeah. Loved that movie. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. I didn't love the last couple, but I enjoy them enough. Did you see the uh, Isle of Dogs? Oh yeah, I liked that How movie quite good? a bit. It was good. Yeah, because well, it was. The Did same you see animation. Fantastic Mr. Fox? I've seen bits and pieces of Fantastic okay. Mr. Fox. Not the same thing. I was expecting no, it, it to was be the same similar animation style. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But different but, story altogether. Oh yeah, I Love Dogs was kind of dark. Well, isn't that was? Did he write that, or was it based off of like a Japanese? I don't think it was based off anything. Really? No, I don't think it was an adaptation. I could be wrong. Cultural appropriation? No. Oh no. <laughs> no, it pays proper respect no, to I, Japanese I know, culture. I know. I'm fucking wrong. But yeah, like, because I dig Wes Anderson, man. Like, I didn't really care for Rushmore, but I love the Royal Tenenbaums. Love Royal Tenenbaums. And Gene Hackman is so good in that movie. Dude, he was a, apparently he was a fucking cocksucker through the production of that movie. Yeah. Like, there's, if you go on YouTube, you can see there's like a video of him just completely reaming Lily Tomlin out. Who's that? Oh, you're, you know, you're not thinking of uh, Royal Tenenbaums. You're thinking of, um, uh shoot L- lily tomlin wasn't in that movie you th- no, you're think sure? i don't think so uh, let me i am you're thinking of shit. uh a da- the david o russell movie aren't you mm, i don't think so all right hold on as we have dead air while i imdb this shit well, it, first I, how about you tell me who who's lily who lily tomlin oh i've never She's heard a of her. famous older actress okay um my ignorance sorry the the big Lily Tomlin blowout, I think, was from like I Heart Huckabees, and that was David O. Russell scre- Maybe, screaming yeah. at her, and then she screams back at him. No, it was him. It was him going up against uh, Angelica Houston. Oh, yeah, oh. he and Angelica Houston like butted heads really bad on that movie. Okay, which I could see, but like it, he was just a total dick. Like that's, it was that's, her, like that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, because he was so good. In that. So was she. She <laughs> well, was he's phenomenal. A, well, he's a fantastic actor, but I, yeah. I, from all accounts that I've heard and read about and stuff, he's a piece of shit. Hmm. He, like he's just a, he's an asshole, hmm. like a total asshole. That's too bad. And he yeah. went out. He went out on what was the Ray Romano movie, Mooseport. Welcome to that Mooseport. That was his last. I that think was so. His last movie. Yeah. yeah. What a swan song that was. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so, so what? What? Uh, what uh, kind of? What was the last movie that you guys have seen? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I saw Incredibles 2. How was it? I liked it a lot. It was also kind of dark, especially for a kid's movie. Really? There were some pretty intense well, the, moments. The first one was pretty dark in places, too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I still can't get Grayson to watch it, at, and he's almost four. This he's one's like, probably worse. Really? Yeah. They, there's like a scene where one of the villains uh, who hypnotizes people through a TV screen, you're like in a room where it's just the only light is flashing walls. It's, the, yeah, it's, they said, it's really intense. There's they, a warning before the movie. Yeah. Starts. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Probably necessary. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. For yeah. epileptics for, for, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I, I don't that. care about this kind of thing, but I saw lots of, lots of, uh, family friends of ours com- criticizing some of the language that they use for like a children's movie. There was a couple oh, swear words and things like really? that. Somebody yeah. Said, what like, the hell or damn yeah. Or something. Which I don't, I don't care about that, but I was, Kind of surprised. Yeah. Bob's like, fuck you, I don't care. 
I'll tell you about your fucking movie. But did you did you see it? I have not seen it okay. yet. Okay. There's no. like a really, really fantastic sequence like towards the beginning with Elastigirl, who's basically female Mr. Fantastic, mm-hmm. um, with like a motorcycle that splits in half. So she's yeah. got like one half of it on her on her feet. Nice. It's just so, so good. Well, the, dude, so well done. I loved the first one so much. Like that was, yeah. that still to this day is my favorite Pixar movie. Yeah, I like it a lot. Like it's brilliant. And it, I'm like, every year they, they would announce the new movies coming out and they're like, we're doing Toy Story 2. I'm like, all right, well. All right. All right. Cars 2. All right. <laughs> Cars 3. Nobody liked Cars 2. <laughs> like, why are you doing a third one? Yeah. Oh, we're doing Toy Story 3. All right. Toy Story 3 was actually pretty fucking Nobody good. liked Cars 2, but it sold well and kids yeah. love cars. I'm yeah. sure you know. Oh, well, yeah. 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 See, I want to watch Lightning McQueen. <laughs> it's not the name of the movie, kid. I saw uh, Credibles 2 also, and my wife always complains about shows and movies where a person, you know, a couple have, have, have a kid. And the kid is never to be seen on screen. Whereas mm-hmm. so Incredibles too, I don't know if they were like trying to do a tongue in cheek, but like um, they, so the baby for me stole the show. Jack Jack, yeah. yeah. Jack Jack stole the show. And uh, they always had somebody watching him and he was a major part of the movie. Uh, and I was telling Brittany, my wife, I'm like, hey, you know how you always complain like on Friends when Rachel never has her baby? Like, look, right. like in this movie, you know, they always take account of where the baby is. Like, it's not like mysteriously like, oh, she's, you know, the baby's with a nanny or something. Like, right. During like the action sequences, they're handing him off. Like nobody wants to be like that's holding hilarious. him because they want to be in on the fight. It's, that's it's real pretty life. funny. That's right. What a yeah. would be like, who's going to, who the hell's going to watch my kid while I go do, you know, X, Some Y, cool and Z. shit. Yeah. I was really worried going into that movie, how they were going to use the baby because I think just, I thought like the little that they used with the baby with powers in the first movie was kind of annoying. Um, I was afraid it would be sort of overdone, but it was not at all. They really? they handled Jack Jack very well. Very cool. I yeah. loved him. I laughed every fucking time he was on screen. I don't know why it caught me off guard every time, but like, mm-hmm. I just because we I think we have a baby now, so yeah. whenever <laughs> she's excited about something, it reminded me of that. So the correlation. Right. But uh, that kid stole the show. Yeah, me. it's worth seeing. It hits comic book notes, hits James notes. Bondy yeah. kind of notes. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I definitely want to see it. It's one. It's on my list to. Because for me, like, obviously, we don't really get a whole lot of opportunity to go to the movies. Of course. But, like, with my job, I, f- I get freed up the opportunity midday sometimes. So I'll just go sneak into a movie for a couple hours and then go back to work. Yeah. So, like, that one's on my list. Ant-Man and the Wasp is on my list. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet either. And then next weekend is the Teen Titans Go mm. movie. And my oldest is into Teen Titans Go. So nice. I'll, I'll probably pick up some tickets. I'll take him to that next week. I'll probably week, take my boys, so. too. With Incredibles 2, though... Did you feel there was enough conflict in that movie? I felt like that's my only complaint about that movie was that it was very, it was besides being very predictable who the villain was, it was very cookie cutter in terms of the conflict. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think so. And I was actually, I wasn't caught off guard when you found out who the villain was. I was kind of caught off guard when you found out who the villain was not. Because I was, ex- do a spoiler. Okay, spoiler alert. Yeah, I was so expecting. You- Sorry, mm. Bob Odenkirk's character to be the villain because they made him kind of skeezy, right. kind of slimy, and the he kid, wasn't. Yeah. You thought that he was working with the sister? Yes. Okay. See, I thought it was her, and then I was a little bit surprised. You're right. I thought maybe they were working together, but for sure I believed it was her because she was very techy, and that was... Yeah, maybe maybe she wasn't, like, even though she was technically the primary antagonist, she wasn't the one that most involved. That's just kind of... Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you mean. And I wouldn't that, call that it. I wouldn't reason, call yeah. it not enough conflict, but like for a villain, sure, yeah, yeah. I and it's probably that whole balancing act act of it's it's a kids movie, so like you don't want to make it too complicated. Where right. you're like, what the hell happened? Because it was you know very. Uh, there has a lot of social commentary about you know how we you know view things and how we live vicariously through TV and all that. It's it's an interesting movie. Mm-hmm. Was there a lot of Frozone in it? Oh yeah, yeah. more than the Sam first Jackson, movie. Yeah, dude, he was great. His character is amazing. Yeah. That? Did you guys see um, Split? Yes. Did. did you see? Oh. And then I'm assuming you saw uh, I, Break. Uh, I saw Unbreakable. Unbreakable. I yeah. saw Split on in nightmarishly bad conditions. So uh, we went on vacation last year to Japan for two weeks, which was nice. incredible. Uh, flying back out of Tokyo, we had a four-hour layover in Beijing, and then we flew home from Beijing, and it was awful. Oh, man. It was just terrible. The worst, like, uh, the other guests were terrible. They were just, it was, I, I won't get into all of that. Uh, I was very uncomfortable for 14 straight hours. Ooh. And so I watched 
I, I watched the entire Godfather trilogy back to back nice. and then split. I, I knew somebody had spoiled the twist for a split beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was I was shocked at how good James McAvoy is in that movie. Dude, yes. he's incredible. He's creepy as fuck in that movie. Oh, yeah. Like, he, he's a great actor. Like, because him and uh, that Miles Teller kid kind yeah. of started coming up right around the same same time frame and whatnot. Yeah. And I like I dig McAvoy. Yeah, I, I, Teller, I, I didn't mm. mean I was surprised because I thought he was a bad actor. But just really? the, that no, no, I don't think he's a bad actor. Oh, I think he's okay. a fantastic actor. Yeah, yeah. That just seemed kind of I hadn't seen a movie where he played that kind of role before. Well, I mean, it was very dynamic. He played like twenty seven different yeah. characters. When he when he gets ultra creepy towards the end yeah. with the creepy face, that was like I'm sold on this movie one hundred and ten. And then he actually turns into a monster yeah. at the end. I'm yeah. like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> that was Whoa. awesome. And then his therapist was like, Oh my god, this thing you were talking about inside of you is real. That <laughs> yeah. ninth or tenth or eleventh, whatever personality that he kept talking about mm-hmm. and i was like wow this is pretty crazy yeah and then the tie-in at the very end with uh bruce willis showing up yeah but yeah. like they just put out a still for a screen still of the three of them sitting like chained up in in uh like a therapist's like in a the like a mental institution of right. some kind I, i'm cautiously optimistic about that well i mean yeah i it's mean M. night yeah is he's kind of hit and miss he but is. dude he knocked it out of the park yeah with, yeah with uh um, was with Split. Split was amazing. Yeah, it was very good. Even though, like he did that one. Uh, he produced uh, that one movie, Devil. Did you see that one? I did not. No. It, it took place in an elevator, and like you wouldn't think of like, and literally, it was a single set movie in well, an elevator. Claustrophobic, so I can see. Very yeah. claustrophobic, and then like people just get like literally picked off. In the dark. I feel like I've heard. I've seen a trailer for it. It was good, man. But like I... it was one of those like jump scare horror movies but it was pretty damn good and i'm not a huge big big horror fan i do it yeah neither am i i I, sometimes i I like movies that like leave it to your imagination sure you know like they do leave stuff to the imagination but they're not really into the jump scares but they're more into like that psychological thriller aspect. how did you feel did you see uh the witch I hated which you did, yeah. Because I, I thought that that I think that's exactly what you're talking about, right yeah, there. Yeah, but it for me there wasn't. It didn't feel like there was enough tension there. Hmm. Like it's like I'm like, oh, so the guy and like his family just starts disappearing one by one, but like they just kind of disappeared. It wasn't under like weird circumstances. Like he turned around and they were gone. It wasn't like sure, like some weird shit happened and then he turned around and they were gone or like. They walked off into the woods like the one little girl did to try to find her sister, the baby. Right. And then she was gone. And then at the end, you just see the witch eating the baby. And I'm like, Ugh. okay, okay. Like, I just like I, I liked the concept of it. I just did not care for the execution of it. Hmm. I think I felt the opposite. I really? was, yeah, I was skeptical going into it, but I just liked all the the old the, the old English and the way that was all pulled off and right. kind of added to the creepiness because I didn't really. I wasn't comfortable watching an entire movie like that, I think. But I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, it was a I, very unorthodox horror film. No, yeah, absolutely. And it was shot beautifully. Yeah. Like, and I think that everybody acted like the acting was on par. It was yeah. really well done. But I just think that they could have done just a little bit more. Hmm. I haven't seen it, but have you seen Hereditary? No, but I've heard it was... I've heard mixed reviews. I've had some people say it was fucking excellent. I've heard yeah. some people say it was shit. I want to see it, yeah. You know, same thing with Mother. Mm-hmm. Like, see, I'm an Aronofsky fan, uh, so I definitely want to see. I haven't seen Mother yet. So. I I have it. I bought it. It was on iTunes for like five bucks, so uh, it's like, all right, I'll buy it. I haven't watched it yet. It's pretty out there. Well, for me, Aronofsky is one of those directors where like I like his shit, but his movies are like the movies that I can really only watch once. Mostly, yeah. Like I think the one exception to that is like The Wrestler. I could watch that movie. Yeah, because that, that one didn't have like a no. completely horrific no. end. I, I think I've only seen Requiem for a Dream once, and I never want to watch that movie oh, ever no. again. Uh-uh. Requiem for a Dream, yeah, and same with Pi. You probably won't yeah. want to watch yeah. Pi again, but uh, my favorite is The Fountain. Fountain I also have the, the Fountain graphic. was great. I have the graphic novel, and that is my favorite movie. Really? They had so, a graphic novel? Good, yeah. so- good soundtrack, too. So oh, that's what I yeah. listen to to study, is I would listen to that, especially like, or if the kids piss me off, like, and I have to like, you know, take a shower or whatever and like mm-hmm. get ready for the day. I'll put on that or just something like, yeah, because it just calms you down. But uh, so Aronofsky didn't think it was going to be made. So he made it into a graphic novel. Really? That's I'll cool. hunt that but, down. Yeah. Yeah, so I bought it. Yeah, because uh... like all of his movies focus around obsession. 
in one form or the other. Hmm. In Pi, he was obsessed with the number Pi. Right, and yeah. the people, everybody around him was obsessed with it. In Requiem for the Dream, it was the obsession over hero- of Substances. the drugs. Yeah. And the obsession of the mother trying to get onto the game show that she was never oh, really going to get on. so sad, that, man. That part of the movie pissed me and off the, the, so the, sh- the shock much. therapy? Ugh. Yeah. That, like, oh, that was so sad. That was the worst part of that whole movie for me. Not the not the very end scene no. where the where the ass to ass. That didn't bother me. <laughs> it, was, it was the scene it was the mother like she didn't ask for any of that yeah you know jared leto's arm getting cut off oh i didn't give a fuck about jared leto but it was the mom yeah that was the saddest part uh you know with even with um the fountain he's also obsessed with his wife obsessed with with curing curing his wife and and noah was building a boat yeah i haven't seen noah but i want to because yeah the wrestler he was all right it was i've heard it was it was shit it was that's what i hear but it was shot. It's Russell Crowe. So I mean, it's got to be shit. Uh, dude, have you seen the nice Get guys? Get out of uh, here! Have you seen the nice guys? Yeah, that movie's it's excellent. Isn't that Shane Black movie? Yeah, it was a Shane Black yeah, movie. I, 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 I love did, that movie. I did pretty much to. anything he'll do. Yeah, it was a great fucking film. I'm excited about Predator. Yeah, just because of him. Predator looks dope. Yeah. See, looks... the last the last Russell Crowe movie I liked was uh, Les Mis. Oh really? I actually, but I hated Never his voice. I could not finish well, that movie. Because he can't sing. Who? Russell Crowe. No, that's why I was like, oh, but Hugh Jackman and then uh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah. That was, I mean, for, for, I like musicals. So, I mean, I really Anne Hathaway didn't des- doesn't deserve half the shit she gets. I like Anne oh, Hathaway a lot. I thought you were going to say she didn't deserve an Oscar. I'm like, fuck well, I, I, you. I, I was I, crying I, like a bitch <laughs> at the end of that movie. No, I never saw it. I never saw it. But I, I yeah. like Anne Hathaway. And, yeah, me too. Like, she does s- shitty movies, and that's her. I mean, well, that's, you know. Have you seen Colossal? No. no. Oh, Colossal is so good. Um, it's her and Jason Sudeikis, hmm. uh, and like she plays this party girl who just can't get her life together. She comes back home, ends up working at Jason Sudeikis's bar, and like during this time period, a kaiju comes out of the ocean and starts tearing up Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> but it That's only awesome. comes out when she's at this park. It was it, a comedy. You're saying it's it's a black comedy. Okay, and come to find out when she goes to this park. She can control the kaiju. Wow! Like she goes into this park and like she like. Somehow, I want to watch it now. Actually. Yeah, and then Jason Sudeikis comes in and he controls like this giant robot, and they fucking bash it out. And it, it's it's a good movie. It was I believe just, you. I believe you. It was just one of these like fifty million dollar low budget, you know, movies like independent mm. films. It's excellent. I know. I want to see it. Have, have you watched the Godzilla movies? No. Are you guys at all to the Godzilla movies? Eh. I saw the last one. I don't remember what it was. The one with Brian Cranston or the no, Japan, no, 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 the, the Japanese one. What did you think about it? I liked it a lot. I, I liked, liked it way more than the Brian Cranston one. It was so interesting to see what they focused on. So, like during what was it called? Uh, what was the the Japanese one that came after the Brian Cranston Godzilla? Gojira? I can't. I can't remember. What I think it was called. Gojira. But yeah, so when when the monster was attacking Tokyo, these guys were like surviving and you know, the prime minister dies and he's like, Oh, what do you want to do after this is all over? Oh, I'm going to try to, you know, go from uh, chief of police to become the mayor or whatever. And it was like, why are you talking about this during the movie? And um, I think that's a very Japanese thing, but that's what I'm, but anyways, yeah. So that focus was so different compared to sure. The and like the money. ultra heavy handed messaging. I like oh, that. I kind of like that too. Oh, well, so it's like I, watching a Christian film. Kind of. Well, sort yeah. But I mean, but in America was like, not the villain, but they're kind of like, Oh God, fucking America has to come in and try to clean this, Blow this thing up. Yeah. I and mean, that's exactly what do you think? That's exactly what it was. Right. Are you familiar with like Miyazaki movie? movies no. so he's a really really famous and like beloved japanese animator um studio ghibli is like the movies that they put out they're kind of like the Dis- the japanese version of like disney the far and away yeah, and yeah. Spirited uh, spirit, away spirit away, spirit away spirit hell's away. moving castle princess Mononoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah somebody all else of those movies the show recommended that stuff to me and said they're fantastic oh they're spirited awesome away, I heard is amazing. they're awesome they're incredible but also very very heavy-handed like messaging mostly like relating to environmentalism and things like that mm-hmm. sure yeah but I, I I I give it a pass. I don't I don't really mind because they're just fantastic movies. Yeah, and I wouldn't I would for different reasons I like Godzilla, but I don't mind like the anti nuclear weapon kind of message. Sure, right. yeah, absolutely, especially in today's day and time. Yeah. Well, so yeah, why did you love Gojira more than the U.S. Godzilla? Because it was not the U.S. Godzilla. I don't care about the the. It was the same reason I didn't like the Matthew Broderick one from the nineties. It's oh, just all that like oh, I don't care about all the the human melodrama. Yeah, it had a pretty decent soundtrack though. Oh yeah, 
Oh, except uh, for except for that that, that fucking song. terrible Jimmy Page Puff Daddy yeah, song. Fuck that pretty, song. That, yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> was that uh, the uh, where they took Cashmere and oh, Puff man. Daddy rapped over it? You ugh. took one of the greatest songs ever recorded and ugh. just, just and Puff Daddy. Yeah. Da-da-da. Yep. Da-da-da. And Puff Daddy just can't rap. That was no. There was wasn't there Foo Fighters song on that? There was a Foo Fighters song on that. Silver Ch- Silver yeah. Chair. Was that the one Metallica? A good. Did Metallica do a song? Oh, they did it for Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. I'm so sorry. Two. Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible Two. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, that Godzilla soundtrack. It also had um, there's a, a lot really good design. Green Day like remix yeah, with yeah, yeah. like Brain Stew, Brain Stew. With, Stew. with Godzilla sounds, which yeah. I actually prefer now. It was, <laughs> that's yeah, that's awesome. pretty funny. Yeah. But the you know going back to uh, Aronofsky's uh, soundtrack, so I love uh, Clint Mansell. Get Clint, Mans- to the mic. Clint Mansell does the uh, soundtracks for Requiem for a Dream the and scores. for The Fountain. It's the scores, um, and uh, yeah, I love that. I love that shit. I wish I I wish when I would watch those other movies, I would, I would pay attention more to the scores and the soundtracks. Yeah. But... Well, because it's like Hans Zimmer does everything now, and I'm like, you just stop making noises in the background and actually compose something. Yeah. See, I'm kind of conflicted about him. I mean, because yes, he is on everything, but then I but saw he, I saw Blade Runner last year, and he channeled like Vangelis perfectly. Did he? I think the soundtrack to Blade Runner 2049 is is the best work he's ever done, far and away. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I just purchased that. So I, I need loved to watch that it. movie. I really. Yeah, I, that's another three and a half hour long. Like, yeah, it's long. But it's worth it. It's better than the original, in my really? opinion. Really? I think I agree. Yeah, that's one movie where. Um, I don't have many regrets in life, but that's one reg- I regret not seeing that in theaters. I heard that was one that you really needed to see it just on the big screen to oh, get the smoke I, at all. I went and saw it by myself in IMAX, and I got I got pretty baked before I went, and it nice. was almost almost too intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was brilliant, man. And I watched. Um, well, and it's got Ryan Gosling in it, and he's just dreamy. So he's a good actor, man. Did you see good. Drive? Yeah. Did you see Drive? Have you seen Half Nelson? No. Yes. Who Half Nelson? Yeah, was fantastic. Yeah, to the crack. Heroin. I was smoking crack in the in the bathroom stall. Well, yeah, but he was pipe. also shooting it up and oh. shooting up in the. It's been was, a while. That was the last scene where the the chick delivers the heroin to his room and he closes oh, the door. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Dude, it was I a good seen. movie. Now he I know the ending. High... Thanks a lot, asshole. Well, the, that it doesn't give a whole lot I, away. I, I, it's got a good but, soundtrack. Broken Social Scene did that soundtrack. Did they? Yeah. But yeah, he he plays a, a drug addicted uh, high school teacher, and his interaction with this particular student not inappropriate, but like how he. I, just how their relationship was. It was a good. But he's also relationship. like a good, like well-meaning, like good teacher who cares about his kids. But he's also a drug addict. Kind of like Dangerous yeah. Minds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am going to be the white teacher coming in here fixing this minority neighborhood. I, I prefer High School High. Yeah, John Lovett. I love that movie. Right. Yes. Or the substitute. Have you seen the substitute with no. uh, Tom Berenger? No. no. Yeah, where he doesn't he beat people up and he, stuff? Yeah, he goes in there and starts <laughs> fucking up people. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, or is it Tom Sizemore? I think it's Tom Sizemore. I think it's Berenger. Does it matter? I think it's Does it matter? Yeah, yeah, really. At this point, no. Uh, poor. Yeah, the guy who did that movie. Oh my god. Yeah. How about you? Any any movies you've been catching lately? So I saw Incredibles two. Um, Man, not really. I've been on a Star Wars kick, so I think sure. before that was probably The Last Jedi. Nice. And yeah, I I tr- I made it just at the end, and I watched it like at a ten thirty screening, and I was watching it by myself like a loser, and I was like, <laughs> I go to movies I, by myself all I, the time. All the time. Yeah. I don't know where that stigma came from, but like I've always felt weird going alone. I don't know really? why. Yeah. Oh, I enjoy it, man. I don't have. Do to, you? Yeah, because at the end of it, like. I like having discussions about the movie, but like if I go to the movie like with someone, I have this weird anxiety when I'm there. Like, are they enjoying the movie? Yeah, I really I'm like the, the movie. Exact I, same way. I going to really concerts. Like going to concerts too. Same See, thing. I don't care about concerts. I feel the I, same way there though. But I have a fr- my friend, my best friend Eli, and I always go to concerts together, and yep. we always go to see the same shit. Like we're we're really in tune musically. Sure. So it's like I never really have to worry about him not enjoying himself. You know, because I know that we like the same kind of music. But like movies, I'm constantly like, dude, I hope they like this. I hope they're not pissed off that they just spent nine dollars to go see this movie because this movie's awesome. I really like this movie. So it just got to the point, like I said, like mid days, I'll just go to a movie. Fuck it, I'll go f- pay five, ten bucks and go see a matinee and just be done with it. Yeah. Did Infinity War come after Last Jedi? Yes. Okay, yeah. then that was the last one that I saw. Okay. But yeah. uh, the last one I saw before Last Jedi by myself was Alien Covenant. Yeah. And I walked out of that movie. Confused as fuck, and I love did Ridley you, Scott. Did you see uh, what was it called? Prometheus. 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 I I'm maybe part of the minority, but I thought that would, that's if so. Alien One is my favorite sure. out of the whole franchise, and then Prometheus is my second favorite. Yeah, really? and then Aliens 
I heard there's an alien too, and it's uh fucking terrible where the aliens actually get on Earth, but I haven't seen that one. No, that was Alien versus Predator. There was an alien too. Like they, they made a sequel that never made it to the theaters. Really? And it's a I, but it bombed. I've never heard of this. It, oh, it, yeah, it, it bombed either. and never I think it was only released on VHS or something like Weird. that. Yeah, My buddy that, was telling me. Prometheus, that's your second favorite, huh? Dude, Prometheus was a good movie. I, I like it, it. but it, that's it's still kind of a hot take. Because I thought it was very cerebral, where mm-hmm. it, it brought back that intrigue for me that Alien did. Aliens, to me, I, I know was produced really well, and I know that Cameron did an awesome job with it, but it didn't uh, it didn't capture my intrigue as much as Prometheus. Wow. Right? There were some dumb shit, you know, where uh, what's-her-face dies at the end because she doesn't run to the side. Right. There's yeah, some, yeah. There, I thought that whole thing. I'm like, why don't you just sidestep? Yeah. Right. That's a common internet criticism, yeah. But yeah. it's like, they didn't kill it for me. I was like, yeah, they want to kill her, so they're going to kill her or right. whatever. Any way is going to be stupid. Um, but yeah, so there are some flaws, but I thought that movie cerebrally was just... I loved it. it yeah, caught my intrigue a lot. I really liked Alien Covenant too, though. I thought that was really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Like it was just a good popcorn movie, and it was just one of those where it's like, I like the movies where like they have the big name star in it, and they get killed off in the first ten minutes of the film. Yes, like th- that always like trips me up. I just I dig that when that Hurt happens. Locker. I never saw the Hurt Locker. Oh, they kill uh, Guy Pearce right oh, at really? the beginning. Yeah, I he's a nobody. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the things that I dug about it because it was uh, James Franco, and he didn't even have right. any speaking lines in it. See, and there's a lot. See, Ridley Scott is such a fucking mess. I was listening to a lot of podcasts and reading articles about it, and I guess so. Franco really loves the Alien franchise, and he was supposed to have a bigger role. And I, they did like a pre, yeah, like, like a, a online. Like, I'm sure it's on the DVD release as well, but it was like a 10 minute like prequel, like short, yeah, about it, and he was very prominent in that okay i haven't seen that but But, yeah and i I just heard that ridley scott just can't make up his damn mind and that's why prometheus was a lot was was hard for people and that's why alien coven was a disaster for a lot of people Mm -hmm. he couldn't fucking make up his mind of where he's taking the david trilogy um but yeah that was a hard movie to i walked out like enjoying the action Mm -hmm. because it went back to the you know alien three gory kills and whatever stupid mistakes of you know putting your face in you know alien plants but uh right why are you smelling that you (laughs) stupid idiot some of those xenomorphs and whatever were freaking awesome yeah this uh, is the first time i think they didn't have a person in the suit the xenomorphs were all digitally that last one was fucking awesome yeah i don't care what anyone says i love that fucking one i do i don't think it looked great though for CGI, I think I think oh. it, it it looked kind of dated, which it. it's fine. I I didn't it, I still enjoyed the movie. I didn't love that nearly as much as I loved the first two Alien movies because, I mean, Aliens the the Cameron one isn't really a cerebral. It's it's no, an it's action a, it's, it's an a, action movie action horror movie. But it's yeah. it's like it's like the one two punch from it's totally different from the first movie, yeah. and that's why I like I think they're complementary. Yeah, I didn't sense. feel that with with Prometheus to, to Covenant though. If, if, Covenant felt too just like mindless action movie. It wasn't cerebral in any way. No, yeah. it tried hard and yeah. some weird. Well, it's like yeah, because I mean, like the, the the cerebral aspects of it came with like the David's monologues. Yeah, right. And, and then that and he's was, awesome in those movies. Yeah, yeah. Michael Fassbender, Fassbender is my favorite. Amazing, you know, my favorite actor. And like it, it was definitely one of those where like I just wanted more of the the architects. Yeah, yeah. Because I like that concept of like. These are the people that created life on Earth. Like, if you watch the Prometheus extended cut, like, it really gets deep into it about, like, you know, yeah, he drank the shit and then, like, decomposed and his DNA became, you know, the beginning stages of life. Right. You know, and I dug that. I was like, damn, that's a really cool take on the creation myth yeah that was the beginning of prometheus Mm -hmm. i didn't know if maybe that maybe that was like part of an extended cut i don't know well in the extended cut like it's a ceremony there's like the ceremony that goes on around him and all there's all these architects that are standing around him and then he take he steps onto the waterfall drinks the shit and goes into the water but there's a ton of like the the um architects standing around him like it was it was more of a um like i said it was like a ritual that they were doing right and that's then, interesting yeah like if you get a chance on the blu-ray there there's the extended cut is on the blu-ray and it's i might buy that one because that's i did love well, prometheus dude I, I, that was when i was like oh dude it's coming out i gotta buy it and you end up spending 40 dollars on it and now you can get it at walmart for like 19.95 i'm like yeah. god damn it <laughs> So but I, don't, yeah. I don't buy a lot of like for viewing at home, like 3D movies. That movie has the some of the best 3D I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. I saw that in the IMAX 3D. Yeah, so did I. That was pretty dope. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, because I saw, let's see, I saw Deadpool 2, which was excellent. If you have not seen it, I really want to. I love the first one. The The second one's just as funny. That's good. It's just as good. And I don't think it made as much of the monies as the other ones, but, you know, as the other one, I should say, but it's fucking great. I have no excuse for having not seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like a split, there's a cameo. uh, Brad Pitt does a cameo in it. I think I heard that. Which is pretty fucking funny. He had to deliver, I think uh, Ryan Reynolds had to bring him a Coke or something like that to make that cameo. Really? So it wasn't for a ton of money. He was just some like prank that I guess Brad Pitt made Ryan Reynolds do. Right. And the funny thing is Brad Pitt was actually um, considered to be Deadpool. Sounds familiar. When they were like doing kicking around the original castings before Ryan Reynolds was involved with it. Would have been interesting. Yeah. He's kind of owned that character now though, so well, it's hard to imagine what that would have been like. Yeah, he is Deadpool. Yeah. You know I don't want to ruin it for you, but that that uh that ending man it was so good. Uh for Deadpool, Deadpool two. two, yeah. yeah dude, the, it was uh, great. We, just ruin it. we ruined Incredibles yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah. That's true. So yeah, when he says, shoots Green Lantern, yeah, <laughs> Green Lantern, that was and then hilarious. He kills, Wolver- no, uh, he kills himself. He kills himself from Wolverine. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was so <laughs> good. See, I thought I thought Deadpool two was better than Deadpool one. Deadpool one for me got old. Halfway into the movie, I'm like, I get it, dude. Like, I don't know. I just got tired with the character halfway through that movie. Really? I did. I don't know why it became too much. Uh, breaking the third or fourth dimension or whatever it fourth is. Wall. Fourth but, wall. But that's like, even in the comic I books, know. he breaks fourth wall yeah. a I believe lot. It. I believe it. That's what everyone tells me. But I just, but the but Deadpool 2, the story to me was more intriguing. Mm-hmm. And uh, his his girlfriend or fiance, him trying to get back to her was, I, I loved it. It was just more sentimental, I think, right. than, than maybe the first one. Maybe. Yeah, it was less woman in the refrigerator Yeah, as a, as a theme in the movie. You know, but it kind of was, but it wasn't. It was just, but I, I dug it, man. I love that movie. And it and it really enriched uh, his his uh, relationship with Colossus. Yeah. And I loved see I loved Colossus when I was a kid. He mm-hmm. was one of my favorite X Men, and I loved seeing him in the first one. I'm like, yeah, more Colossus. Oh, he's not in it that much. Whereas in this one, he was more. Right. And that relationship was really good. Yeah, I just wish they would have had Negasonic in it a little bit more. Which one is that? The chick, one? the okay, young yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they her Didn't little... they make her up for the first movie. No, she was a different. She was she was an actual X Men. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Grant Morrison created her, but relatively her, new character. Yeah, though? Okay. but her powers were totally different in the comic books. I see. That maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, and then like in this one, she they they have her have a girlfriend, and she's just right. this little Asian mutant, and, and she's, she's really so, nice to him. And she's so cute to Deadpool. She's like, "Hi, Wade." <laughs> that's right. See, I didn't the moody the moody teenager thing was uh that again another old and tiring trope yeah I thought, I, and uh, again this is this might sound mean but i thought the they made the asian girlfriend a little too hello kitty so i was yeah. kind of like uh that kind of was gr-. for me it was kind of cringeworthy yeah. a little bit it was cute yeah but it was a little bit too much hello kitty yeah i could see that i could see that i don't yeah. beat a shit on it i i loved yeah. it more than like the first yeah one. i mean it was, she was definitely a one-dimensional character but then again like she didn't really get much screen time either so true true except at the very end yeah. So, but yeah, it was a good movie, man. It's definitely worth it. If there's a dollar theater in the city, I'm sure you could find it. Yeah, but I probably could. Yeah, it's fucking worth it, dude. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a reason for having not gone and seen it. You shame me. Yeah. No. <laughs> did you both see Infinity War? Ah, uh, yes, I, I did. did. Yeah, it's excellent. I love that movie. I did not love it. I felt like, especially with the end, the stakes just still feel too low because, for the most part, they don't. I don't think Marvel or Disney really have the the balls to keep major characters killed off. Well, and well, the thing too is that every character that they've killed off has a fucking movie coming out yeah. within the next two years. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it's that, like that took away a lot of the, like the weight behind it. I mean, sh- they I, I thought it was good for what it was. I like, I enjoyed it. Yeah. They should have killed off cap. Yeah. They should have killed off. Sp- uh, uh, I don't want him to kill off Thor. I, I really like Chris Hemsworth a lot. <laughs> and Thor 3 was fucking awesome. It was brilliant. See, I yeah. haven't seen that one. It's so oh. super I funny. I didn't even know why he had the eye patch. And that's why at the beginning of the movie, I was like, Who, was that fucking Thor? I, I didn't recognize yeah. him because I didn't see Ragnarok. Dude, Nog you got to see Ragnarok. Yeah, it's, it's on it's, Netflix. It's extremely funny. Yeah. I, I, that's what I hear. I heard it was like goofy and whatever, so I don't know. It's it's a buddy cop movie. Okay. It's it truly is. It's a buddy. Have you ever seen like Flight of the Concords, anything like that? I saw it a a long time ago. Okay, so it's uh, people connected to that show. So it's really like classic New Zealand like dry humor. (laughs) That's awesome. I just my kids just watched Rio, so I forgot the guy's name. Uh, who who's there's two singers. 
I don't know. I forgot. But anyways, one of the guy does the owl voice. Jermaine something. Jermaine, yeah. And mm-hmm. he, and I would so I they watch it, but I hear it, and I just hear his voice, and that's the first thing I think is the Fly to the Concord songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just can't help but laugh, even if it's even if the movie's not funny, it because right. it's him, it's hilarious. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brett. Brett's the other guy. Brett McKenzie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I never I never watched Flight of the Concord. I didn't have HBO when it was a thing. Yeah. So it's a pretty funny show. Nice. Nice. All right, guys. This has been a great conversation. I don't want to cut it short, but I know you guys have shit to do in the morning and places to drive to. You gotta drive back to the city. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got none. <laughs> yeah. But uh but no, man, thank you guys for coming over. It's been been fun just getting a chance to shoot the shit with you guys. Yeah, it was great. Meet you face to face in person and and, just... and we didn't kill you. No. I mean we still have time though, I guess. What's that? We still have time. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> I mean, you know, between here and the door. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thanks again guys for coming out. Um, you know, anytime you want to come back on and Dan, I'm gonna be recording a podcast with Dan here soon. Yeah, I'll have to give you a call. Sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out, man. But uh Dan's gonna be starting up a podcast you want to talk about it not yet okay because we don't have the format yet but uh it's definitely gonna be focused on on retail employees so uh yeah i've been doing a lot of hot content creation noise <laughs> well as soon as uh as soon as you start putting them out let me know and i will definitely p- promote them all right great. you know and uh bob what you got going on anything good nope radio head <laughs> concerts radio head concerts yeah driving to cincinnati Right on. Yep. All right. Well, for Pop Goulash this week, I'm Ruben. And I'm Bob. And I'm Dan. And be kind to one another.